Can you say cerveza? It's time for the beer podcast, Morty. Worst beer podcast ever. Steve and Adam. Ah, funny guys. Hop Nation USA, beer podcast leaders for over five years. It's episode 244 of the Hop Nation USA podcast. And if you can tell by the little bit of echo, we are in a brand new location. We're not recording at Hop Nation Central because we're on the road. And we've taken ourselves to another place in Pittsburgh that you can get some fine, fine drinks. But it's not beer. Because I told you last week, we're not doing beer the rest of April. That's April Fool's. <laughs> <laughs> Instead, we are here live at Apis Meadery in the tap room that's located right in the heart of Carnegie. And we are joined by, you know, owner, uh, mead maker, do you call yourself a brewer, Dave? Or yeah, I guess so. Yeah, okay. There's, uh, <laughs> technically, I guess a mazer, but I've been a beer brewer my whole life or for mm-hmm. twenty years almost now, so mm-hmm. I just go by brewer. Fair right. enough. Fair enough. <laughs> There's no heating in any way, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> brewing's brewing. That's gonna make it way easier for us. For because, sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll say brewer too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mazer's gone out the window. <laughs> we'll put that in the footnotes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was wondering if there, because like you just mentioned, you know, there is no heat element to it, so I just wondered if there was a a specific specific term for you know a mead maker and you said mazer so. yeah m-a-z-e-r cool. i don't know if there's any other terms and i don't know of any other professional mead makers that use that term i don't use that term myself either yeah. but because people are like what are you talking about I might as well <laughs> say like witchcraft i mean it doesn't really matter at that point right yeah but yeah like i said we are joined by dave who is the owner and brewer here at uh, apis meadery so yeah great Thanks for having us. Oh yeah, here. thank you guys. Uh, yes. Thanks for We're excited to on. get to get rolling here. Man. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 Apis has been a place. I mean, you you celebrated seven years in two, uh, 2021, right? Yep. So, like, you, you have been a fixture within you know the Pittsburgh beer scene, despite not being beer for a long time. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, if you think about it, we we kind of came in with people old school people refer to as like the freshman class, Mm -hmm. uh, the 2014, which was brew Mm -hmm. gents, hitchhiker, grist and us. Right. Um, and we all had parties those first few years (laughs) together, big time. And we've all, you know, expanded and and went on our separate ways and and all seen fairly good success. But there before those four wasn't like, you know, any other like starting of smaller craft, you know, you had Penn and church and full pine or Mm -hmm. whoever river town, you know, North country. Um, but you didn't really have, a big emergence of craft here quite yet. You mm-hmm. know, you had full pint after Penn and all those guys kind of pop in and do their thing and, and been here bouncing around ever since. But mm-hmm. yeah, so yeah, we're going on eight years in August, you know, so uh, pretty That's cool. Awesome. Congratulations. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. Yeah, and like you you were always somebody that I, one, look forward to seeing at Beer Fest because you were always there mm-hmm. because you know, it was always just a nice uh, palate cleanser in a way. Oh, for you, sure, yeah. you guys, you know, provide a lot of different flavors that you don't get from beer. And like when beer gets too heavy, you know, you, you, you're a nice thing to turn to. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Heavy meaning, uh, body wise, not alcohol. Oh yeah. Right? No, oh yeah. Because yeah. we yeah. usually yeah. double, you know, <laughs> like yeah. I'm sick of these five percenters. Let's go have a 10. Yeah. You we got to keep those turbos spooling. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, I feel like we always take something different to the shows. We always try to bring something like you know, ultra drinkable, refreshing. Um, so yeah, it's, it's been pretty fun. I mean, shows have always been something I've done, you know, even for other companies and stuff like that. The past few years have been a little strange on those, but we've always like, liked to do those and prided ourselves on them and always just went, looked at it as almost like, yeah, we're gaining customers, but we're kind of just acting a fool, if you would. Like we'd always <laughs> dress up and be goofy and, you know, get a ride home and just be fun and just kind of show off what we do and just be mm you know, ultra different. I mean, that's what we always say. Right. Drink different, you know what yeah. I mean? So. Yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. So obviously if we're talking mead and we're at a meadery and we're drinking mead as well. So <laughs> Dave, you've, you've kind of curated what we're going to be drinking tonight. So why don't you start us off and tell us what the first mead is of the evening? So, yeah, I mean, we're starting here with uh bomb first and that's our, it's a staple for us. It's a blueberry, blackberry, strawberry dry mm-hmm. hopped with nugget and Simcoe. Uh, just a c- touch of carbonation on there, petulant, if you will, just very light, um, just enough to make it kind of aromatic and refreshing. And uh, we produce this every, say, two to three months or so, just to keep it super fresh because it's hoppy. So mm-hmm. we we run through, we do a 20 barrel, like I said, about every two to three months, something like that. Um, super killer, real, really refreshing drink. This is easily our best seller throughout the whole state. Right on. So uh, you said that this is hopped. Uh, is this typically uh, what you call dry hopped or is this during the fermentation process? 100% dry hopped. So okay. it's in secondary. Um, I basically 
do a primary. I do this fruit and the honey separate for almost all my products. Then I blend it together um, in secondary and in secondary, I'll, I'll then hop it. Okay. I'll then clear it, throw it in a third and like fully, you know, polish it before we package. Um, so 100% dry hopping. Nothing's heated, so there's no bitterness. Okay. I, I had to ask that because if I didn't, we'd get a letter. Sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What specific situation yeah. are you hopping? Yeah. Yeah. I usually do it, uh, like I said, right at the beginning of secondary, let it sit for about seven or so days. And I just transfer to a third away from the hops, basically. Right on. Cool. Cool. And what is the ABV on this? This well? is eight and a half. Eight and a half. It's nice. kind of middle ground for us, like session meat, if you will, <laughs> you know, in a way. Uh, I try to keep a lot of stuff around under 10, eight and a half is kind of the goal. Mm -hmm. uh, in this state, we are allowed to sell any of our products that are eight and a half or below to uh, beer stores, specifically distributors who have different licenses than everybody else. So if we keep it under that, we can then sell the products to them regardless of what they are. Okay. Hmm. If I go above eight and a half, which a lot of our stuff is, they have no option of getting that. So a bottle on a shelf at a beer distributor is kind of tough to not to have all these customers. You know, we're in 25, 35 beer distributors around here. Like, oh, we really want lemon bourbon, but it's 9%. Well, we'll make it, next, yeah. make it eight and a half next year, you know, like appease the customer there. So, mm. so that's why you'll see a good chunk of our stuff okay. at eight and a half. Gotcha. But, uh, that's interesting because, yeah, I guess I'm learning that for the first time that I didn't know that's how it worked because I've seen, like, I've seen your stuff in beer distributors sure. and I've also seen Kingview as well. Sure. And like everything I've seen from Kingview specifically was like a lot of their five and six percent, um, like carbonated soda, almost like yeah, they shoot these. for like like a little bit lighter seltzer, a mm -hmm. little bit easier drinking. I think just more, uh, you know, commercialized stuff in a way, just mm -hmm. something to get out in smaller bottles at a lower alcohol, right, maybe yeah. just to for the beer consumer. Like we're obviously gearing this towards the beer consumer. Mm -hmm. I think they're kind of doing the same thing, but almost towards the seltzer side yeah, a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Yeah, it, it just always seemed like, yeah, you, you saw stuff that like falls in that seltzer or even cider, like, you know, playing to those crowds. For sure. And I, I think like, that's pretty much where they're at with that. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, why, why, why do I never see the big wine, like the big stuff? <laughs> well, that's what's weird is like we can't, you know, we could talk about like Utopias in that same store, right? We mm -hmm. can talk about some of these giant beers, like 25% oh, yeah. oh, yeah. beers, but we're stuck at eight and a half and right. under. <laughs> I get it. I mean, because we're not technically a wine or a beer, you know, mm -hmm. we're kind of our own thing. Mm -hmm. um, but rules are rules, so I'll just stick to the rules. Yep. I'm lucky because when I actually started APIS, you weren't allowed to sell our meat in pretty much anywhere. Right. Right? Really? I right. went to almost every brewery in the city that I had liked and talked to and drank from. I was like, hey, if there's a local mead, would you put us on? They were mm -hmm. like, hell yeah, because they were allowed at that point. It was 2014. And when I was talking to these people, it was pre-14, pre-opening, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, you know, so we would go basically just to beer breweries and say, well, here's here's what we have. You know, and they didn't really care. They were allowed to have one local winery. At that point, we were ah. kind of considered a winery. Nothing changed on our end as far as technically. Mm -hmm. But the state had changed all the laws in two, 2016, okay. allowing local breweries and distilleries to sell to each other, wineries as well. Okay. Um, so that's why you'll see some local liquor here or some beer here or vice versa. You'll see our meat elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they changed a whole bunch of laws around there. So that was kind of in our benefit, really. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's great. So uh, just coming back to uh, the meat we're drinking, though, it has like a really nice deep red color to it. Uh, it's incredibly clear. You know, I know that's like pretty common going through me that you're going to get a lot of clarity, but you know, sometimes, yeah, I mean, it, it really depends. Like I've seen a lot of clear stuff. I've seen a lot of, uh, like hazy, not mm -hmm. necessarily cloudy. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say, but, um, I, I really just think it depends on the maker and what they're kind of achieving mm -hmm. for almost everything we do. We don't filter anything. We don't boil anything. This is all naturally clearing, but I try to make it everything we serve is in a clear bottle. I try to make it so it sticks out like a sore thumb. It's right. brilliantly clear, polished, finished product when you get it. Mm -hmm. And I've seen some that aren't. And that's okay, too. I mean, some of the best beers in the world are hazy or clear. <laughs> you know, it depends on your, your hazy or your pills or whatever. Yeah. So, yeah, it, this guy's super polished, but again, not filtered. In in the mead world, it, we're talking about the clarity and, you know, sometimes there is some haze. Are there mead, mead houses, meaderies that go that other way and go almost into like the sludge side of things where they just over sugar and just I've over fruit? I've seen heavier, but not necessarily hazier. I mean, I've seen like more of what you'd say, like a sack mead or like a really rich traditional kind of mead, okay. but never necessarily specifically 
say sludgy like a Weizen, and not that Weizens are sludgy. I fucking love Weizen, but <laughs> or hazy like a you know a hazy. It, right. It, it, I've we do a, a hazy IPA meat, and that's obviously purposefully hazy. Mm. Um, but I've never really seen I, I've never seen anybody do that either. But I've never really seen anybody gearing towards that. Gotcha. I've seen people gearing towards what they think is traditional meat, heavier. I don't want to say syrupy, but way richer, almost syrupy, yeah. like the traditional Vikings blood, the traditional sack means. Mm. We shoot towards drinkability. And there's everything from King View doing 5% stuff or whoever. There's a mm-hmm. bunch of this. Or, you know, like Brimminghorn doing 22% stuff. Just like, <laughs> there's, a, there's a fast world of it. Yeah. It's just like beer. I mean, it could be just a vehicle for flavor, really. Mm-hmm. Right, whatever right. the hell you want it to be. Yeah. And I, I see the flavor on this one is really good. It, it's really fruity up front. Thanks. And then you definitely get those hop notes on the back, mm-hmm. as it, it's kind of dry and bitter on the back, and sure. you get a little a little bit of that earthiness. Right, so. and it kind of just draws you back in. Yeah, yeah, to yeah drink it, and drink it dries more. it out a little bit. It gives mm-hmm. it that dryness. So then it's you know you want to quaff the next one to kind right. of mm-hmm. get back the juiciness. Yeah, on yeah, it. yeah. This is yeah a pound per barrel. Like I said, it's uh, Nugget and Simcoe. Nice, right on. Yeah, yeah. You definitely get like the 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 earthiness from like the Nugget, and I'm not getting a whole lot of pininess that a lot of people associate with Simcoe, sure. but. You know, I, it's definitely something that just draws you back in because, like you said, fruity up front, dry on the back, yep. and you just kind of bounce back yeah. and forth oh, between yeah. those until your glass is empty. <laughs> yeah, that's kind <laughs> of what happens with it, too. It's just back and forth. We have a mango habanero similar vibe. Oh. It's really juicy mango. Then it goes into some some pretty hot heat, mm-hmm. but then you got to get that mango back to wash away the heat. <laughs> yeah. Next thing you know, you're drunk and the glass is very empty. You know, <laughs> That's how they get you. Yeah, <laughs> that's the pulp pulley yeah. here. <laughs> I think one of my favorites is uh, the one that you do with the jalapeno. Oh, yeah, the jalapeno pineapple. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, your jalapeno yeah, it's another pineapple. another one of the spicy also, guys. Yeah. yeah. Did you guys ever uh, – this is like going back years and like my brain is not good, so. <laughs> Same. <laughs> but, <laughs> we'll see which one of us remembers if either. For, for some reason, I remember, did you ever experiment with a ghost pepper for just like even brewing up a cure? Not for brewing up a cure. That may have been Laurel Highlands, though. We, okay. We did a ghost, uh, ghost pepper and guava before. Okay. Ooh, okay. Um, but never – not as far back or or definitely not yeah. from brewing up here. It might be Laurel Highlands that I'm remembering, sure. though. But they definitely I mean, have at least one or two peppered ones. I don't think I've ever had a ghost pepper from them, but I wouldn't mm-hmm. put it past Matt. Yeah. He's <laughs> mad genius. <laughs> Just one of those things. That it's, a, it's a back memory. That's sure. <laughs> that must have been a good day. Yeah, it's it was a hell a of a day. brewing up here. I've never left one of those remembering what went yeah. on. Anyway. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have very specific memories from brewing up here. I have, you know, the hot pepper mead that I had one time. The root beer porter that tasted like you know root beer, and then like one that year somebody great. somebody made a Reuben fucking beer. Yeah, mm, that, that sounds weird, but I'd check it out. <laughs> yeah, it was like salty and it had a lot of pickle and dill to it, and that's it was, okay. It was interesting, but it was something it was you would touch a caraway, a little rye. Yeah, yeah you could yeah. probably pull that off. Yeah, yeah. it wasn't. <laughs> See, I can hear the gears turning. <laughs> yeah, from here yeah. Now. I'm like, all right, dude, you got me. You got me. It wasn't terrible. It just it probably wasn't something you were going to sell like a lot of. Yeah, yeah. But, but that's why brewing it's a up the is the place for that. I mean, that's the whole goal. Throw a five gallon or 10 gallon batch <laughs> right. together or something <laughs> yeah. weird and mm-hmm. get your name on the map and it's for a cure it's for a yeah. cause you know that's why it's always one of the best uh you know like best events that we like going to oh absolutely so, yeah yeah you know, we're glad we talked about it episodes past but it's back this year so we're happy about that yes. as well yeah trub's been putting that on it's got to be 15 years or something now it's been a long time so something like that yeah mm-hmm. yeah i think it's been oh it's definitely over 10 yeah that's awesome so, man. yeah yeah it's, it's a great event check it out coming back october uh but you know, we're talking meat. <laughs> <laughs> well, sort of. We're bouncing yeah, all over yeah, the place. That's, so I, I guess we should – let's just blow through the 101. What is mead? Uh, How do you make it? The simplest thing, the easiest way I say this to people that don't know what meat is or, or want to learn what meat is, is apples make cider, barley makes beer, grapes make wine, honey makes mead. Perfect. All those things fermented separately obviously make – you know, it's just fermented honey. You dilute it down, add some yeast. Wait a couple days and drink it. <laughs> Literally, there's a lot more process in there, but, you know, keeping it as absolute simple as possible. Um, making it as simple as, yeah, get yourself the purest water you can find, whether it's from your burrow or from the store or whatever you need nutrient-wise. Um, get some pretty neutral yeast, whether it's beer yeast, depending on the percent you want, or wine yeast if you want something a little bit more crazy or you do, you do, you put mm-hmm. lacto in there. I don't care. If you're <laughs> fun. Um, and then, yeah, get some nice honey. I mean, we use all local honey from Bedelia and Apiary. It's only about 20 minutes from here um, in Hickory, PA. But yeah, get some good honey, get some good water, get some good yeast. 
let it go. Try and try and try and try again because there's no book written about this. There's not too many commercial examples to go out and find unless you're going to go online and, and ship them to yourself. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, quite simply, it's fermented honey. Yeah. Right on. There, there, there's no, like, macro version of mead. Not at all. At the moment. Not know? yet. I mean, yeah. there's some bigger guys out there like Bee Nectar or mm-hmm. Moonlight, but they're not really what we would consider macro. There's right. nowhere near Miller Lite mm-hmm. or, or whatever, you know. Yeah, so there's yeah, there's no like training program. People were, like coming off of a you know macro to start their own thing. Not or, at all. I'd yeah. never I had never been to a meadery and or a winery in my life yeah. before before starting Apis, and right. I kind of liked that because I didn't know what to expect. I had already been a beer guy. Mm-hmm. Still, am a, a big beer nerd. I had brewed professionally for years and home brewed for years and. Who cares if they're if you had seen one? I'm going to make what I think it should be. You know what I mean? And that was mm-hmm. kind of the goal. And now we, my girlfriend and I, have been to a bunch of places and look at other ones, and they're vastly different than us, but they're similar. So I think we are, you know, on the dartboard. Maybe not quite the center, but you, know, <laughs> you got a twenty, maybe a double twenty. I don't know. You know what I mean? But but it was nice to not have seen one, and it's mm-hmm. nice to not have went ah, at your grandpa's, you know, Yingling or, or Miller or whatever a few times when you're eight years old. You know what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, yeah. So there's no preconceived notion. It's just like this tastes good. I'm going to sell this. Mm-hmm. So then that's it. You know, the door's open, you know, yeah, yeah. start yeah. running. Yeah. <laughs> if it works, it works. I mean, right? can't, <laughs> maybe somewhere down the line, you know, somebody says, well, that's not really me, but no, nah, it's me. Nobody else told me it wasn't. Right. <laughs> that's the thing. I, as far as I know, I, you know, professionally and I guess legally, if it's 51 or more percent honey mm-hmm. fermented, yeah. it's yeah. meat. Yeah. So regardless of what types of fruit or hops or the carbonation level or mm-hmm. aging process, whether it's stainless or oak or whatever, yeah. Yeah. still Wait, made. Yeah, which is another thing because, like, again, I mentioned that Kingview that I found, and that was, like, incredibly carbonated, like sure. almost like soda. Yeah. But this is this is much more in the line of, like, wine in that, I don't want to say flat, but it's not, you know, it, it's just more juicy and drinking that way. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's just enough bubbles to, like, tickle you mm-hmm. and kind of make it aromatic. Almost right. everything we do is still. This is one of the five or six that we do that have any carbonation at all. Mm-hmm. Some are higher than this. You know, we do, like, a, a rosé-inspired meat. It's got a little bit more carbonation, probably even double that, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But people want that. But, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of, you know, going back to that winery, like, I think a lot of people started seeing the seltzer movement in the past couple of years and really started just ramping up mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. That's not necessarily the direction we're trying to take in any way, but right. I don't knock anybody for doing it if it tastes yeah. good. You right. know what I mean? But, yeah. I, yeah, I think that just speaks to, like, the spectrum that mead achieves because, you know, we're talking we're talking carbonated versus not carbonated, 8% versus 22%, you know. Absolutely. So, like, while beer has its own, you know, differences in uh, malt and, you know, the way those are brewed, you know, the way these are made or, you know, have come out with their own. So it's worth investigating everybody oh, yeah. who makes mead. So, yeah, yeah, we do National Mead Day here with just usually like friends and other brewers mm-hmm. from the area and stuff. And we've had, you know, as little as, say, 20 or as much as, say, 70 different bottles of mead throughout the whole world and country. And we'll put them into categories where the first category is just straight meads. The second one is heavier straight meads, meaning sack meads. The third one's melomels, fruits and, and honey blends. So we'll go into hippocras where it's hopped and then, you know, go on and on and on. So we have peppers at the end, basically. And, uh, yeah, it's nice to just see what, how many worldwide types of mead you mm-hmm. can even find for one. That's sourcing within, like, a few hours, really, an yeah. hour and a half. <laughs> And then, you know, the difference, different water profile. I mean, that's that's the big thing with beer, obviously, oh, yeah. is water profile. It's the same for, for me. Obviously, it's still going to be 90-some mm-hmm. percent water in there. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's nice to see, you know, what people do with it. There's so much you can do. Is there any sort of trends that you found uh, when you, you know, it, on the international level? You know, do the Scandinavians like, you know, a sweeter mead? Or- um, it seems like internationally, it, a lot more traditional stuff. It seems like... So far, at least like East Coast America has started more of like what I consider a modern mead, where okay. it's a lot lighter, a lot more drinkable, a lot more hopped, a lot more fruit, a lot more geared towards craft. You know what I mean? I not, not even quite beer, but just kind of the whole movement of just like, you know, beverages, I guess, at yeah, this yeah. point. But if you go to, say, England or um, even get stuff from England or, or even South America, we've got stuff from South America, it seems like it's specific honey varietals like oh we have just this one sunflower honey and we're gonna ferment it but leave it super sweet so you really get the tones of the honey which is nice and we do some of that kind of stuff too to showcase the honey around here but it doesn't seem like they have other versions of that gotcha it's not like well here's that with strawberries too because we grow strawberries Mm -hmm. in the same area it's not but here it's like we throw in everything yeah. in the hat. <laughs> there goes those uh, Americans wiling yeah. out again. There's marshmallows in this thing <laughs> put lucky charms in there so with that like with the process of uh, 
making mead, you have, I assume you adopt a lot of the same things. We already mentioned how you dry hop. Sure. Uh, do you also like use the same kind of amaretti purees at no, times? Yeah, or? no amaretti purees at all. I uh, I use basically just aseptic purees. Words like that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, basically it's like organ. Oregon, however the hell you say that. Yeah. Know. The company's Oregon, but it's Oregon, whatever. Oregon. <laughs> uh, so Oregon purees, we use some of that. I use some like Florida bulk stuff. So okay. basically just aseptic purees and or full fruit. I'm mm-hmm. um, never really like uh, flavorings or anything like that. Like okay. we have had Amory send us samples and they've just been like <laughs> weird. They're just like, they're not bad, I guess, but they're not what we're going to use. They're right. just like weirdly flavored and thick and rich and hazy. And yeah. I don't even know if they're fruit, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I like as somebody who doesn't even work in the beer industry, I I just do the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I get advertised Amaretti and Aseptic all the time. Yeah, they send us like, something every three months, and I'm like, throw that in the garbage. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I've tried honestly a couple times where we just even homebrew stuff and helping out local breweries that had an issue here or there. I'm like, oh, mm-hmm. this didn't come through the way I thought. I'm like. Well, here's who I use, and here's what I've been doing. Here's this, and they're like, "What about this?" I'm like, "Where's your dumpster? Can, yeah. we, can we throw this from here? Have a contest, and we can make it in the dumpster." So you mentioned how you, like all the honey comes from Bedillion Farms. Yep. Uh, do they also provide any other fruits or ingredients? Yeah, not at all. That's just okay. a honey farm. Yeah. Oh, they do some meat and stuff, but we don't use meat in, okay. our, in right. our meat. <laughs> Though you'd be surprised how many people come in and ask what kind of meat we make. Salami meat. Because people say meat. <laughs> Hurry? Yeah. What kind of meat? Yeah, do you have Check like, the sign again. I'm like, dude, it's it's splattery and graffiti in there. They're probably drunk a little bit. So like, I'm not gonna knock them. I can't read that well either. You know? Hey, we'll call mate Yin's call. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? Sometimes we we have charcuterie back there. I'll just True. cut them a meat tray. And there like, you go. This is exactly what we have, man. Sorry about the confusion. <laughs> Keep them happy. Keep them coming back. Maybe we can sneak a meat on there. Like, yeah. You know, but no. So he he only provides us with honey. Okay. And he provides us with like about six or so varieties of honey, depending mm-hmm. on season. And he holds them in tanks and can kind of pull us what we want. Oh, right on. So we're normally using wildflower um, with a mixture of like clover and stuff in there. But we can get like goldenrod, buckwheat, knotweed, um, black locust, all, all different types of mm-hmm. stuff like that. Um, just different types. And we have all of those like in just singular varietals. Mm-hmm. Where we make just like just a goldenrod mead for spring, just a clover mead for summer, just a knotweed for fall, blah, 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 you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, he doesn't give us any other fruit. I've sourced fruit through him, through other farms out near him because he right. knows every farmer and they barter everything back and forth. Um, but to be honest, it's hard to get like raw fruit around. Mm-hmm. Like, and if you're talking like strawberries or something like that, you can usually do that. But um Trying to get it from to from somebody who's either going to puree it for you or not like just pesticide it to hell and back where it won't do anything for me whatsoever right. is like pulling teeth. Mm. Okay. Um, and then the amounts of fruit we're using, <laughs> yeah. people are like, I don't, dude, I don't have that. I, do I get that people probably once a month coming in like, oh, we have, we have hives. I'm like, cool. Do you have like 300 of them? You know, <laughs> yeah. we're using like 2,000 pounds a week here, dude. Like, I don't know how much honey you think you have. But. This needs to be your primary yeah. business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like the guy that I deal with, we've been working together for about nine years mm-hmm. and we've grown together. So he knows what to expect. And I'll give him a heads up. Like, hey, we're hitting spring. We're going to need like two, three, four pallets kind of quick here. And like one a week in the next six weeks. Or, hey, it's getting fall, winter. We're going to slow down a little bit. We're going to start barrel aging some stuff just to kind of wait, you know, waste some time while it's slower. So he knows, but anybody else, they wouldn't. They'd be like, what? How many? You need 24 <laughs> buckets this week? Yeah, good luck, dude. Yeah. I guess that's another thing I was curious about because it seems like, I mean, with cideries, obviously, it seems like it starts a lot with apple farms. Absolutely. And then with meaderies, it seems like a lot of people start with their apiary first. Absolutely. And then turn it into a meadery. So how, how did you come about, like, I'm going to open a meadery, but I'm not going to have a farm or hives. You just knew that guy. And- well, weirdly, I didn't know the guy. I met the guy uh, probably about a year into building the company. We hadn't been opened yet whatsoever, but uh, I had other a couple other sources locally. I mean, we were even going to start with like maybe some Dutch gold or something like that, but you could pick and choose like what areas you want it from. Mm-hmm. That's Lancaster, but they do like third huge like world supply right, of honey yeah. or whatever. Honey, um, pretzels. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so, yeah, I was actually – our sales guy at Penn was having a pig roast, and he was going to get a suckling pig. He needed somebody to help him. I'm not really into butchering animals, but I'm like, oh, I'll help you move it, I guess, whatever. Mm. I get I get pork out of the deal. So. <laughs> and obviously beer was part of the option. 
Um, so yeah, we go out and we, I don't know where we're going. I'm just pans helping my buddy. We go and he's, he's like, Oh, we're going to go to this farm, Burgettstown area. Cool. So we show up, dude, super nice. Everybody's cool. And then he takes us on his little ATV, rides us around the whole thing. Like what is, what kind of farm is this? You have like ducks and cattle and <laughs> pigs, but like. This is just a giant field. <laughs> I see no wheat, no sunflowers, no. <laughs> Dude, there's nothing growing whatsoever. There's like 20 ducks over here and a bunch of trees. Anyway, he's like, well, yeah, we're yeah, we're a bee farm. Like, we're we're basically a giant bee farm. I'm like, awesome, dude. I'm opening a meter. He's like, everybody says that. I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm already on my way. I have paperwork submitted and everything. <laughs> You're like the guy. And that was it. He's like, oh, yeah, no shit. We have X amount of hives that we can supply this amount. And we started hitting off, got numbers exchanged. I hit him with an email probably two weeks later and said, hey, give me 10 buckets. Figured it out. And ever since, we've been cool, man. And That's it's awesome. just, yeah, yeah. yeah, it was just like random good luck. Yeah. <laughs> and we yeah, got a good is. pig out of the deal. <laughs> <laughs> and I got pig and beer. <laughs> right? Absolutely. It was a great day. <laughs> it, was a, it was a solid day. Not Everybody won on that deal except for the pig. Yeah. <laughs> Nah, he didn't know what he, was happening. He was for a purpose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we ate him. We looked him in his eyes and ate him. Yeah. He was already out of the deal. That's right. <laughs> he was done, so yeah. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. That's pretty awesome, though. Um, yeah, it's random. I mean, it just happened to work out like that. And mm-hmm. just lucky that, that to find that guy. You just know? a happy accident. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Is there, is there anybody else in the Pittsburgh area that you like uh, kind of collab with or like get ingredients from? Like, have you tried it? Have you tried like coffee meads or tea meads using? Because yeah. I know there's a lot of good roasters and tea yeah, for houses. Sure. For in that area. first uh, brutal fest, we did a collaboration with uh, Zeke's and Black Forge, mm-hmm. and we did an 18 percent cold press mead. Nice. Um, so we did that. That was really dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> it's like four what? cups of coffee and a glass of mead, dude. I think it was my numbers have to be off now because that was like 2015 or something. But mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure we used like. 40 pounds of cracked like you know beans in per per tank like for a little three barrel tank it was mm. expensive dude <laughs> and it was just caffeine like one eight ounce glass was i swear like three to four cups of coffee Jeez. there was no way of measuring it, <laughs> and how many retweets to get that to happen again <laughs> right well we uh the owners of black forge have changed or one of them has kind of moved or whatever but um, yeah, we, I have a tiramisu up and coming, so oh. that will come out this fall and that will have coffee, but it will also have like Tahitian vanilla mm-hmm. and some jaggery and some other stuff like that Ooh. in there. Oh, well, you will be seeing me in my wallet in the <laughs> right, fall. Right, yeah. <laughs> People have been begging for coffee forever and I mm-hmm. wanted to do coffee previous. I'm, I'm a huge coffee person. I mm-hmm. obviously drink coffee. Um, and when I met the, the Nick who used to own Black Forge or whatever, he's like, we got to do a collab. And this wasn't necessarily for Brutal. It was just for the hell of it. And I loved his cold press. And I was like, I'll do it if we can make your cold press. And he's like, how would you do that? It's going to taste like honey and cold press. I'm like, dude, I can make honey taste like nothing. <laughs> like we could just ferment it fully out, clean it up, let it sit until it's perfect. Make sure the water's perfect. The, everything, acidity is perfect. Mm-hmm. And then we'll just soak beans in there, man, just like a cold press. And we did. So that's I awesome. would love to do it again, but it would have to be with somebody else. Because <laughs> he's not yeah, there anymore. Right, right. <laughs> can I put an earworm in, into your head and possible oh. ideas for the future? Sure. A possible Earl Grey mead? We did an Earl oh, Grey you did mead. A so our, our, okay. I would love to do it again, actually. But so our year five anniversary was um, bergamot, blood orange, and Earl Grey tea. Okay. We we do those every year. It seems like every other year we do something with tea. This year was green tea and Meyer lemon. Mm-hmm. And then every other year is like a crazy barrel. Okay. And have you done Lapsang? No, we have not. That's, the, done, that's the other one I wanted to put in your <laughs> we've ear. We've only done black <laughs> Tea, chai tea, and Earl Grey tea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because Lapsang is smoked black tea. Okay. And so if you're, I mean, if you're a fan of Ralk beer, sure. I'm, I'm right? sure you are. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Chakra law for me. Yeah. If, yeah. <laughs> if you're coming from a pen background, I assume you appreciate a good smoked mm-hmm. beer. So yeah, uh, I, I have found good success brewing beer with Lapsang. Does getting, the smoke come through? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it might be worth investigating. How long does it seem to stay like in suspension or as far um, as like live, nice, smoky flavor? You know, good question. And I don't uh, think it lasted <laughs> long enough for us to find out. And that's the only yeah. that's the only issue we have here. So when we did the year, I think it was year five for the Earl Grey, yeah. it was a three barrel tank. Mm-hmm. We like basically pre-sold every keg mm-hmm. and we had maybe 10 cases here. And it was like, because I don't think tea's going to kind of be able to sit in that bottle and retain like 
you know, full flavor and right, whatever. Right. Um, and that's that's my only ever question with teas is like I'd have to do a little bench test and see. Yeah, yeah. But as long as we did a nice quick, you know, little batch and turn it over, <laughs> I'm into anything, man. Turn on the pilot system. Right. Well, yeah. we, we do a whole bunch of little three barrels. I'll do yeah. one to start and I'll do a second one. And if those go well, I'll just throw it in the tens. And if right those on. go well, we'll blend into a 20. That's how it works. So our test batch is three barrels. <laughs> nice. That's awesome. All right, Adam, here's our homework. Okay, I'm listening. One. Yeah. We still have a few bottles of that beer. Yes. So we'll check to see if those are still smoky. Yes. Two, we'll or get if in touch. Any tea left? Yeah. <laughs> Two, we'll get into. Uh, we'll talk to Nikki and Tom. Ah, uh, yes. Or Nikki and Eric. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Eric well, Tom would know what he's talking about too. Tom so. would. Tom would know as Tom well. Tom knows but, everything when it comes yeah. to alcohol. But uh, yeah, Nikki and Eric because they do the meads. Yes. So we'll see if we can get them to make a make a lapsing. And if, you know, even if Apis doesn't do it, we'll still have a little lap sync from them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know problem doing it. I just want to make sure it's like yeah. primo. You we'll know we'll, I mean? do our homework for you. And yeah, see for if sure. Can, I'd appreciate see it. See if yeah. we can convince you. <laughs> but awesome. Uh, with that, though, let's come back to the bomb, the, the standard that you have. Yes. Uh, yeah. Hey, this is a great meet. It is. <laughs> and and I, I do have one unfortunate thing to say in that I can't go back to it because my glass is already empty. Mine is pretty empty. Yours it, is empty. They're all empty. Yeah. 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 <laughs> whoops. Yeah, whoops you do. <laughs> That'll happen. But yeah, again, it, it, it's nice and refreshing. Mm -hmm. It's it's warming up here in Pittsburgh to, you know, the, the, the enjoyment of some. I prefer the bugs stay dead, but. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it was 70 degrees. I was outside all day. That yep. was perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, it, it's like it has that nice, refreshing, fruity flavors up front. And then, you know, if you're a beer drinker, it has those earthy, bitter hop notes of, you know, IPAs past, not the not the citrus juicy shit that you might be looking for. Yeah. <laughs> but this is this is old school drinking. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I usually do that on purpose with my hops. Like what we have for our hazy, it's called unoriginal. Mm -hmm. it's just making fun of people that love hazy. <laughs> <laughs> but I do go with like Cascade Centennial Columbus, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. because I don't know. It's like old school. Like, yeah. I, I'm kind of making fun of you in the first place. Right. Like, I want you to at least – it's a beautiful mead, 6%, hazy as hell. But I want you to kind of have like some memory of like, oh, this is like a traditional, maybe the first Sierra, you know, I've had mm -hmm. like the pale ale or whatever, mm -hmm. something – Something a little bit like classic, that yeah. classic hoppy vibe. <laughs> yeah. Not like I'm not going for like ultra new juicy flavor, like trying to get Rockatoo, you know, and fucking <laughs> thirty pounds per yeah. barrel. Not it's making not, a juice bomb. Yeah, yeah, it's not the goal. I'll go drink hazelnut, but I'm not making it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are words to live by. There you go. Hey, somebody else is already making it. Why you got to bother? Yeah, yeah why just double go up? Buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Well, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back. We're going to have another mead and we're going to learn a little bit more about Dave and just kind of his history and how he got it in the mead and, you know, everything else he likes to brew. So, cool. Yeah, stay tuned. First Sip Brew Box is a one of a kind subscription service for craft beer lovers based right here in Pittsburgh. Every month, First Sip will send you a box full of craft beer enthusiast essentials, including t shirts, glassware, and even food. Right now, our friends at First Sip Brew Box have an offer for you. Just sign up for a three-month subscription and get your fourth month free. Just enter the code HOPUSA when you sign up at firstsipbrewbox.com. That's H-O-P-U-S-A at checkout to get your fourth month free at firstsipbrewbox.com. It's episode 244 of the Hop Nation USA podcast, and we are still live from Apis Meadery. And we are obviously are still joined by Dave. He hasn't oh, yeah. kicked us out or Thanks. hasn't just left the show to us to do by ourselves. Just hang in. <laughs> I'll write the answers down. Yeah. Go play pinball. Just, yeah, just left, <laughs> left for pinball. <laughs> left for pinball. I've done that before. <laughs> Not with you guys, though. No, no. That's nice. Thanks. We feel special that way. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're still at Apis and we're still drinking Apis mead. So, Dave, why don't you introduce this next mead to us? So, yeah, this was because we just talked about it. Our mango habanero. So it's got that fairly nice upfront mango, juicy, but there's that heat there. Mm -hmm. It just, it's like subtle. And then you're like, oh God, it's in my like neck. You know what <laughs> I mean? It, to me, I'm not a huge fan of heat. For food, awesome. Tacos, Indian food, all about it. Give me jalapenos for the rest of my life. Drink wise, it's not necessarily my thing. Mm -hmm. I think because of sculpin, I think sculpin burnt me out. You know, the, the, <laughs> okay. the habanero sculpin. I mean, I think I had. Some bottles of those, I'm like, oh, this is great. And then I have one bottle, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm mm -hmm. going to puke up fire, I think so. Uh, but, yeah, this is what I think is a fairly good balance where it's got that heat. It's definitely there for that pepper head. Mm -hmm. 
but that sweet's going to bring you right back. So for me, it's like, oh, sweet mango. Oh, shit, heat. All right, mango gets rid of the heat, and then so on and so forth. Yeah. This initially started almost as kind of a joke. It was like, ah, we'll do. I did jalapeno. Everybody seemed to love jalapeno. I'm like, I'm going to go a little bit hotter, and I had one or two buddies that were like, that's awesome, hotter. Make it hotter, make it hotter. Fine. Figure pick a different pepper. Go just a touch hotter for the person that wants it hotter. Mm -hmm. Now it's been a staple static (laughs) on for seven years, man. So it's like, cool. Here it is. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I I can say because we were talking about uh, between segments what mead we wanted to have, and as soon as we, you know, the habanero came up, it's like, oh yeah, we need that one. Yeah, we need that one absolutely. (laughs) Well, if anybody's familiar with the show, you know, we are known for bring carolina root beer beers so yes yes yes, yes. that's awesome yes. Man. yeah uh, last year was uh, spicy boy summer in which we brewed a peach tea and oh. a carolina reaper weed ale that sounds good though it was good if you use the good. carolina reaper in the right way you get that mm-hmm. nice fruity note yeah. that peach will kind of like add to that or mm-hmm. bounce from it that yeah. sounds great yeah. I, honestly you only need like one reaper uh for like a drinkable version sure like we we always make like a, a five gallon batch or yeah yeah, yeah five yeah. gallon batch yeah one reaper for a five gallon batch we throw it right in the mash and it just sits there goes through the sparge and everything nice. and then you just get enough heat then we'll split that batch and I'll add a tincture into a third <laughs> third <Okay>. batch <laughs> so just soaking it in like neutral grains and just adding or neutral spirits mm-hmm. and just, yeah. just yep. a little bit yeah, yeah. rock gut vodka that, that works one, yeah yeah that one turns into like sweating and <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> that's great but yeah don't smell that one. Yeah, really? It oh, like makes in yourself? It yeah. is awful. It's great. <laughs> I love it. So yeah, it depends who likes it, who doesn't. Right. Again, I'm not a huge peppery drink fan, mm-hmm. but I'll definitely check it out. Yeah, mm-hmm. but you, you mentioned the Sculpin, and in comparison to your mead, I would definitely say the Sculpin is way hotter. It way lingers a lot more. Yes. Like that beer was, I mean, it was great. I loved it. But also, it would for sure just burn you out yeah. immediately. And I would have like one bottle that was cool, normal. I'm having a hot beer. Then I'd have mm-hmm. one where I'm like, holy shit, dude. Like, did, it, did they put a pepper in this bottle? Right. Like, I don't know how it was so inconsistent. Maybe it was batch to batch. Maybe it was a bottle out of the case. Maybe I was too drunk to notice the first <laughs> bottle. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's way hotter than this. So this was a yeah. little bit more palatable, a little bit more for... Like, not necessarily a crowd, but more people that like hot but don't like that hot. Mm-hmm. Right. And what's nice with this is it still has that that lingering heat. Mm-hmm. It's oh, yeah. still there. You, you take two sips and it's it's sticking You know everywhere. exactly what it is. Yes, there yeah. is no mistaking it. So this is uh, – I just dehydrate habaneros. It's mm-hmm. one pound for three barrels. Everything okay. is built on a three-barrel recipe because my initial tanks are three barrels. Mm-hmm. Um, and so even when I do into – like my 10 barrel, I just brew a nine barrel basically. So I can just keep the recipe very similar. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's honestly just dehydrated. Like I said, one pound dehydrated per three. And I dry off them like a like a hop. Man. Yeah. I'll sulfite first before I go in. So I'm basically already at like clearing stage or I'm in clearing stage. Mm-hmm. Throw them in a bag, sulfite beforehand, throw them in, let them sit a day or two, pull them out, throw them away, get right them on. that amount of heat. So awesome. I'm, it's like exactly the same every time for seven years. I've never changed that process because I think I got a pretty good result the first time. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't really, we're not technically allowed to use like the neutral grain tincture in mm, professional right, right, brewing. Right, right. Um, and I did that for homebrewing for like ever. I'm like, <laughs> how the hell do you not do that? You yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah. within reason, how do you, Homebrew is fine. I can make anything, right? But mm-hmm. how do how how do I make that for seven years consistently, where I don't burn the person that liked it last time and hates it this time? Right. Mm-hmm. So that's that's where the numbers come from. Yeah. Every once in a while, I get a hotter batch of peppers or something, but it's never oh, yeah. enough to really. Yeah, kill yeah, you. yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Those, <laughs> yeah, pepper hotness does vary, and especially like jalapenos. I feel are always a little more volatile. Oh yeah. Because oh, there's time. always mm-hmm. one that's like out of a just out of the same bushel. Yeah. It's just like, what the fuck? Yeah, full of seeds and fire. Yeah. yeah. Just got a mean streak in it. Yeah, we grow them and I'm like, all right, these are all good. If I find that hot one, I'll put like a little bit of that in each jar. Yeah. When we're, when we're like pickling them or something, because they'll just kill you, man. I mean, it's too You're much. for lunch. You're not for people. And when I do the habaneros too, when, when I open the bag, I get them from the same exact source. I get them just from like, a, what the hell is it even called? It's like America's uh, AmericanSpice.com. That's what mm-hmm. it is. So it's just a giant spice manufacturer. And I get the exact same brand from the exact same place. And I've learned to now scoop them out with gloves on, yeah. like from the back. I used to just dump them in, but then I get a shit ton of seeds in there. Like, not only do mm. I not want the seeds for heat, but I don't want them in my pump and shit either. Right, right. right. So now I, I scoop them out and like try to shake the seeds off and pull any like 
whatever else is in there is like, you know, not the best looking ones, like maybe mm-hmm. too dehydrated or whatever. So just trying to get that even balance. So I'm not burning people, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like on purpose, but that's cool though. But yeah. And also like we talked about the cyclical drinking on the last one, same thing. You already mentioned it. You, you get all that fruity mango and sweetness up front. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it, you know, it tapers off into that little bit of burn that sticks on your tongue and then you come back for more. Yeah. It yeah. Ca- it kind of rope dopes you a little bit. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> kind of half of our needs, honestly. Like some of them will fuck you because of that, though. Because you're like, oh, yeah, no big deal. No shit, it's 17%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I yeah. need an Uber now. <laughs> this guy's eight and a half, just like the last one. So it's not really like going to kill you. It's a little more than your average beer at this point. I mean, mm-hmm. but it's not like, holy shit. You right. Know, and you're not chugging 16 ounce right. cans of it either. So it's mm-hmm. not as much of a, a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. We'll be able to go to work tomorrow. Yeah, it's fine. Oh, yeah, fine. <laughs> it's not even, if you actually think about it, it's not even that much sugar residually either. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are always like, oh, these meads always give me a headache. Not these hours, but just in general. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because there's so much sugar in them. But if you really think about this as opposed to like the last beer you guys drank yesterday or whatever, the, the final gravity on that's not too much higher than mm-hmm. your right. average, say, like maybe – Something like a mild or a stout. It's clearly not as low as like a lager or right. something like that. But so I guess that that begs the question in terms of you know calorie intake for for a, what you consider a serving an eight ounce serving. Sure. You know, is it standard to a regular beer? Or is it? It really depends. Like something on this, this would probably be yeah about I'd say 120, 130 calories. In oh, that. okay. So that's really pretty comparable to a beer. But then some of these dessert ones that we may pull out later. They're like breaching a boundary. We don't want to talk about it. And, stuff like that. Um, and so it really depends on that final gravity, how rich it is, how thick it is. Mm-hmm. Is there lactose in it? You know, Did what's the point of it there? Like the last one we had was pretty dry, mm-hmm. almost as dry as like, you know, other beers that you've had. Yeah. So there's not much more residual sugar, which would lead to however many calories would right. be left. So basically this, what I'm saying is the sweeter it gets. The more calories, okay. the more terrible for you it's going to be. But we sense. don't do too many overly sweet things. That's a... A question, I'd say 50% of the new customers that walk in, what's your, you know, not sweetest? And we're like, well, it's not, like if I hand you a grape from the store and you eat it, it's going to be overly sweet and tart. But if I hand you that exact same grape fermented, it could be bone dry, like Pinot Gris. Mm-hmm. So just trying to get people to ex- to explain that honey doesn't equal sweetness. You right. know what I mean? Even though it does in the raw form, fermented, it does not. So if you, and I assume you've had plenty of war stories of trying to drag people through that conversation of trying to convince them what is actually going on. That's Only to sell them a haze charmer at the end of the story. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, I I try not to work the bar as all you know it, it, that often. Not that I don't like it. I just it's not my forte in mm-hmm. general. I do work the bar occasionally, but that that's the reason I don't want to as much because you just get the same question you know and it's like dude i'm trying to explain but they're not listening right you know i mean mm-hmm. your customers are listening specifically because they've dialed in found your podcast and they're listening mm-hmm. my customers just want to get drunk <laughs> right and or they're already drunk right so it's hard to just be like dude I'm like <laughs> did you listen to what i said but yeah, so, <laughs> yeah but you can't say that you're like no man so, you know yeah i'm very nice <laughs> i'm gonna scream at you you, you know? just have steve come down every friday and sit at the corner of the bar <laughs> you know he can yell at people for you that's the thing we do have some awesome regulars that come down and they're they'll They'll do that. People will be picking <laughs> flights and they're like, get the blueberry, <laughs> get the whatever. And they're like, why? It's like, because it's drinkable or whatever. Yeah. Because it rules. Shut up. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Just like take the guy at the end of the bar's word for yeah. it. He's here enough. He knows. Yeah. <laughs> he looks like he fits here. Well, listen to the guy. That's great though. Uh, and I, I think, again, I got, I got in the mead because like I'm not in the wine at all. Sure. Me but either. we talked about like things that give you headaches. Wine gives me headaches. Sure. Don't know. Can't explain it. Just does. And yeah, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, it could I can, be a I can million things. Who yeah. knows? Yeah, you know, I give it knows. up. But like I, I like I said, I, I've run into your uh, meet enough at different uh, beer events and, you know, no ill effects after that. And sure. then I've had it, you know, on its own. So <laughs> and then no ill effects from that. So I was like, oh, yeah, honey wine is fine. Yeah. Regular wine, bad. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, we're not really using like a ton of sulfites or anything mm-hmm. we're using just like, I mean, there's obviously sulfites on fruit, but I'm not really going too heavy with it. Like I said, I do sulfite when I use something like habaneros cause I don't want to get anything crazy in there. And right. I have to use, you know, make sure all my stainless is clean. Um, yeah. When you're running a 20 barrel system, no bugs. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't really know why, why I don't drink wine either. Honestly, I couldn't tell you the last time I had a bottle of wine. Mm-hmm. It was 
probably because a local winery gave me a bottle of wine and said, we love your stuff. Check this out. And maybe I opened it. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's not my forte. I'm a right. beer guy at heart that makes wine, honey wine for a living, you know, so. Um, I, I, I just strive for drinkability. I strive to be inside that craft beer world mm -hmm. without being craft beer. You know right. what I mean? Yep. I feel like that's why we fit into those fests. And that's why we, you know, talk to guys like you where it's like, Hey, you know, come over to the tent. Um, even if you're not going to hang out at Apis, I could show you two, three products. I think you'll enjoy mm -hmm. not going to make you sick. Not give you a headache. They're not Vikings drinks, you know, <laughs> like it's not crazy heavy. It's not going to give you diabetes tomorrow. Nothing like that. And you'll enjoy it. And we, mm -hmm. you know, if I can get you to listen to that or taste this, I'm good. You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And I think that's just something that, you know, that's why, I, again, like you said, that's why we're doing the show today. Cause I think you guys fit really well into the craft beer world and you fit into that drinkability. So it's just, you know, Thanks. people shouldn't be turned off if they hear the phrase honey wine. Sure. And also don't, you know, don't expect super sweet things because you hear honey. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a weird misconception that I still don't understand eight years going on eight years later that people don't. I mean, when I think stout, I don't think sweet, heavy. I actually think Guinness, which right. is mm -hmm. fairly light and delicious, you know. So, But if you hear pastry stout. Well, well now, now well. we know. <laughs> but I also like this, you know, <laughs> so, so I'm not going to knock it. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I just, it's really hard getting people out of that rut of like their own thought. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? And a lot of people just aren't open to checking out whatever else there is. Yeah. Um, we're lucky. We have a ton of customers. We've been around long enough. And, and our word of mouth goes a long way where people are like, oh, no, I've had that. It's good. Mm -hmm. You know, so we have other people drawing each other in at festivals or even just, you know, regular, you know, say locals or whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. um, and there's just the other it. nice thing where you are kind of a, a happy medium, you know, between the beer drinkers and the non-beer drinkers Absolutely, as well. You're, yeah. you're kind of a good meeting place for everybody. Sure. Yeah, I mean, especially even just talking about this room alone, I always call this the third space. You know, like, it's not your house, it's not work, it's somewhere to chill. So mm -hmm. it's... We do serve beer. We do serve liquor. We have at least 25 of our own meads on at any given moment and 40 to go. But say your husband or your wife loves beer or really wants that Maggie's Farm. We mm -hmm. have that right now, ready to roll. And you want to do a flight or just have your favorite mead? That's here too. You, yeah. know? you just want to knock out some pinball for the evening? <laughs> <laughs> have at it, dude. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's, it's, the, it's that third space. There's always got to be that place that's kind of in the middle for adults that just mm -hmm. kind of – it's not work. It's not home. So I'm going to just have a beer whether, yeah, or right. mead. I, I still say beer. Right. Yeah. Lot, so. <laughs> a place where you can just be. Just be. Yeah. You, yeah. You're not expecting anything. Like I drink, like we were talking about cream ale and hams and stuff earlier. I drink mm -hmm. because it shuts my brain off. You know what I mean? It's like when I'm drinking this habanero, I'm, I'm thinking, even myself who makes it, I'm thinking like little pinpoints here, hot there, sweet here. Like, you know, it has this whole little circle on my tongue. But when I'm drinking cream ale, I'm like, man, I've had 100 cream ales in my life or <laughs> probably a 1,000. It shuts the brain off. It's like I don't have to, you know, whatever. Yeah. And that's always nice to have somewhere to go where you can just kind of relax just and chill. and, and Turn on the screensaver. Off. Absolutely, man. Yeah. 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 And, and just speaking of your space, uh, this is your newer space. You've opened this in the past year or two, right? No, this is or, actually, well, we're going on four years in four this Four years space. in this yeah. space? Okay. Has it been that long? Already? It has been that long, oh but it was three, Fucking almost pandemic. three years of pandemic. So we <laughs> yeah. weren't technically open. We opened for nine months and then, you know, all, the, then, all the weird stuff happened, but. Luckily, it was already done and built, and <laughs> it actually helped a lot because during that, I don't know if you guys had ever seen the last space. The the the, mm -hmm. the original space was so small; it only had like maybe thirty five seats or so. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. we would have had to absolutely close. I mean, to like customers coming in. There's mm -hmm. no way you're getting six feet in between tables right. or, or whatever that was. Here, we still are missing twenty two seats in this room. Really, and it, and it feels full. Mm -hmm. I don't think I'm putting them back. I took away all the bar seats over there. <laughs> I like it like this. It's like coffee shop and relax and it yeah. fills up and people get pissy, but sorry, man, it's full That's up. Right. Like, you know, do what you do. Yeah. So, well, yeah, yeah I, I remember the original space, but and I, this is, this is actually my first time here, oh, cool. you know, because of the pandemic and all that. Yeah, pressure, for sure. But, <laughs> but yeah, like this space that you're in now is like definitely comparable to a lot of the other tap rooms that are in the area. So it's mm -hmm. very, it's very inviting. It's very comfortable. You don't have those bullshit stools that everybody has. I don't you have deal nice with cushions. Those. Yeah. I'll spend money on seats in my bathrooms because I want you, again, to like want to come here and relax yeah. and enjoy what we make. Yeah. Those metal stools, those are like turnip burns, man. Like 
I want you to get in, have a beer, grab a yep. twenty dollar four pack, and get the hell out of here. <laughs> get the here, next put like, in here. I, I, my goal is coffee shop, man. It's like come in, yeah. hang out. We sell most of our products in stores, mm-hmm. beer distributors, online, vino shippers, ship to forty some states. This really? is just the chill spot. Yeah, yeah. That's I didn't that's know you fault. sold to forty states. Yeah, forty one states well, throughout awesome. the country. Nice. Yeah. So this is just like, come on in, get a flight, check out everything on, there's, again, there's 25 or six drafts right now of just mm-hmm. mead. Mm-hmm. Come and get a flight, come and get two flights, who gives a shit? Bring your brother, bring your friend, bring mm-hmm. your wife, whatever, and just like relax, you know what I mean? That's what, a nice space, just sit down and yeah, it's just like a, a home base kind of Well, thing. that's uh, the first time that I ever had your stuff was actually at your old, your old, uh, spot, I guess you would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was it, it was hanging out with my brothers and a couple of friends and we were just, the original goal was to go down to Seven Springs and ski, but it was 65 and sunny. Yeah, it doesn't And it's like, well, that's well, not yeah. going to work. All right, well, let's go check out some places. Sure. Hey, I heard about this place, Apis. All right, let's go. We went there, and everybody grabbed a flight, and everybody was trying different meads and stuff like that, and it was absolutely fantastic. And it was so inviting, and when nice. I heard you guys had the new space here, it was like, all right, it's got to be better. And it was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I tried to keep it look identical mm-hmm. you know i tried to keep i mean obviously it's the same artist who's a good friend of mine does all of our art all of our labels joe deck um and when i did the build out it's always like graffiti-esque in mind but with like a cozy atmosphere yeah. so yeah i'm like i want it to look like that initial space three times the size <laughs> you know <laughs> i think i nailed it pretty good but <laughs> yeah. there's always room for improvement i mean we're working on the lights on the patio right now and mm-hmm. this gave us yeah 80 seat patio and fire pits and like so much other options to just like have you know a nicer space right so is there, is there something new for 2022 that you're looking to, to have here at the space um so we have axe throwing right now uh we just started march 24th we're doing it every other thursday with axe 376 out of green tree okay. um so that's the the next one will be april 21st the next axe throwing and again every other thursday six to nine that's kind of our big push for the year other than a whole bunch of cool different new wines mm-hmm. um lemon mm-hmm. bourbon comes out I guess the day this podcast <laughs> comes out, uh, that'll be ultra limited. That is a 18 month bourbon barrel aged sour lemon mead, um, aged in plantain barrels. Um, so it's killer. We make it every three to four years. This has been about four that we made it this time because of the move and everything. We mm-hmm. had to make it empty barrels and then restart the whole program here. Um, but th- yeah, those are our two big things for 2022. Like I said, I'm redoing the lights out here and we're actually. We have a secret going on in the kitchen. So there's something uh, kitchen oriented uh, happening, we'll say early June. Right. Awesome. Um, But that's not public knowledge quite yet. But you guys are the first (laughs) I've said anything about it. Um, And it'll be badass once we all know. Well, your secret is safe with us (laughs) and all of our listeners. And how many thousand people? (laughs) But yeah, hey, you know, things to look forward to. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm always just incremental. (laughs) There's always been more. Always. Always. (laughs) I, I just try to, you know, incremental like slowly mm-hmm. just make everything better as best it can be every year just do a little bit little bit little bit so that you don't necessarily notice if you come and you're like holy shit they painted the place pink or whatever <laughs> I, I want it to be like oh this feels the same but it's just better yeah. the bathroom's cleaner the wine's cleaner the people are better it's just better you know what mm-hmm. i mean like even if you don't notice the goal is just <laughs> holy shit this is cool you know yeah yeah and i think a lot of people enjoy it when they come down yeah Thanks. but all uh, right. Let's get a little bit more into you and your history. Uh, oh. you, you've mentioned it kind of offhandedly here and there that you got your start in beer and that you've been a home brewer for a long time. Yeah. Uh, can you give us a little bit more uh, background on that, though? Like, when did you start brewing? Like, what was yeah. your first? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I started in June of 2004, actually, uh, oh, yeah. just home brewing. I was with, uh, I, had a, I had a decent job, like, at that time, and I just was, like, really learning brewing. I wasn't necessarily home brewing a ton. Um, then I started working at Southwell's Brewing right up here in Green Tree, and I uh, just really started taking off. I mean, I got to the point within the, that first year that I was brewing, I'd say about 48, 50 batches a year. Like wow, literally a, wow. A five-barrel, or I'm sorry, barrel at this point, gallon, <laughs> a five-gallon batch pretty much every week because I'd take Christmas off or whatever because I felt like it was just easier to brew, transfer, and keg all in one long Saturday or Sunday. Mm-hmm. And if I did that every Saturday or Sunday, it really just kept me on point. Like I had to take that day in the morning, 8 a.m. till whenever, and get that beer done. If I let it go for one week, then the next week I have to keg two and brew one and, and all this other yeah. shit, and it was too much. So I felt like if I did that every week and stayed with it, and I stayed with that for, for a long, long time, I still homebrewed all the way up until I damn near left pan and open here. Hmm. 
because I still had time. Then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, fast forward. Um, I, I think I was with South Hills Brewing for a little under five years, a little right around five. And uh, Penn Brewery was just reopening, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, it was 2009, I believe. And that's what I wanted to do. I had just gotten back from Germany. I had spent with Joe, the guy that does all the art here, um, a couple of weeks over throughout Belgium, Europe, Germany, France, different areas, like basically just for beer. Mm-hmm. Um, at that time, I took the BJCP test, uh, became you know more of a professional um, beer judge certificate program as BJCP <laughs> for the listeners who don't know. I don't want you to get a letter on that one either. <laughs> um, so yeah, I took that test and just kind of started really kind of honing into what I really wanted to do. Um, Penn then hired me basically as uh, pretty much like bottle shop. And after a few months, I, I was like, yeah, well, let's move on. And they, they really at that time had like a really good core team, but were kind of struggling for new direction. Mm-hmm. Brand new ownership. The original owner had just passed away. And, and they had uh, three really killer brewers, but they just needed like a little bit more rounded out, I guess, mm-hmm. for lack of a better term. I hope those guys like that, that way of putting it. <laughs> um, and so the four of us ended up working there for like about five years. Um, and everybody has moved on. Um, Andy Rich is now running uh, Arsenal Cider House. Mm-hmm. Steve Chris is over at Maggie's Farm, and Nick Rosich is down in South America with his own company called Musa. Just all great, like absolute giant establishments of alcohol. Um, so yeah, lucky to work with those guys, and lucky for them to just kind of take me under the wing and get the right opportunity at the right time. I think I just knew German beer more than the other candidates at that point, and they kind of believed. In what I was talking about and what I was doing. So. <laughs> a lot of bullshit there, but hey, man, they, they listened to it and bought into it. So, yeah, I I, uh, I was at Penn for years. So I ended up going. We got three GF medal, GABF medals while I was there. Um, nice. I was able to write about 14 recipes through mm-hmm. them to get them all kind of put out. Um, and then at one point, I had I'd always had meat in the back of my brain when I was homebrewing. And at one point, I, I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to make a tiny little meadery. I'm going to rent a little space. I'm going to make some meads. I'm going to sell them. That's see what happens. I'll, every time I would take a bottle to my family or whatever for Christmas, I'd take homebrew beer all day. And they're like, yeah. cool, these are good. <laughs> I've heard that before. <laughs> be cracking the mead and just like <laughs> chugging meads. And I'm like, you guys really like the meads, huh? So I'm like, you should sell this. There's enough beer. You should sell this. And I was actually, it, to be honest, getting a little bit kind of bored with the beer scene at that moment. Mm-hmm. Um, again, this is about 2013 going into 14 and it just was kind of getting redundant. Everybody's doing West coast IPAs right. and then started turning to hazy. And, you know, I, I love all that stuff. I'm a big, big beer guy, but yeah, it was just time to do my thing. Did my thing, rented a space, made some mead. Here we are. Right yeah. on. Hey, I definitely worked out for you because yeah. obviously you differentiated yourself in a way that like everybody wanted your stuff to begin with. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Thanks. And then, you know, it, 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 it even with all of the goof shit that goes on in beer right now with all the glue glops and the fuck ever <laughs> else. A technical term. Yeah. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean, though, because I open that shit and it goes on my kitchen ceiling. Mm. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> but even with all that, you know, mead still sticks out on, as its own product. And oh, yeah. you know, there's always going to be a crowd and an interest for that. So, And hopefully more people will get into it. <laughs> so. I feel like the craft beer scene, once I went more into mead and kind of mm. walked away from beer a little bit, it started, the beer started morphing into what mead was then. Mm. Meaning now there's a ton of heavy, rich, big alcohol, back sweetened with full fruit beer. Mm-hmm. That did not exist in 2014. You right. couldn't find that if you looked. You would not find a cheesecake stout, period, in right. the world. You wouldn't find a peanut butter porter, period, in 2014. Sounds weird, mm. right? I mean, sweet baby Jesus. I think maybe that's probably fair. I that's, think, that's, I think that's that was, fair. <laughs> but I mean, it was only it was like literally three or four. It was like yeah. that one, and I think uh, Beaver, Belching oh, Beaver, Belching Beaver. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then maybe one or two others. That's so, the yeah. thing. So that you you started seeing now all everybody do it. Everybody, I mean, has every it. single brewery that has opened, no one's focused on one or two styles. Maybe DG, you could say DG's pretty mm-hmm. focused on one or two styles. That's mm-hmm. That's amazing to do that and still be like the fucking caliber you are. Like, shout out to DG, you crush it. But <laughs> um, yeah, that it, everything started changing towards that, which makes us fit even better. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like cool. Yeah, if you guys are using fruit and peanut butter or whatever the hell you're using, then cool. I think mm-hmm. we just kind of all merged into one. I just don't have to cook everything and have always a you know a cooked flavor. I don't have to worry about having. On, on the other hand, I can't 
cook things. I mean, I can make a boche, but I can't get that nice, rich, chocolatey stout. I can't make a s'mores mead because right. I can't have a stout background. Right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. so there's positives and negatives to what you can and can't do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just a quick question have you have you like fucked around with any of the other things that have come up in beer like a kvike yeast i never fucked with kvike yeast because i can't even try to like turn and burn in like three or four days Mm -hmm. and when i've used that as beer brewing um i still stay like reasonably relevant modern because i've done collaborations at least five or so per year yeah i don't get the flavors i want out of that yeast for whatever reason i seem to get a lot of like acrylic notes and stuff like that and as a judge it throws me off yeah and here i'm usually doing a primary for like two to three weeks secondary for maybe two weeks and then third until it clears another two weeks or something like mm. that so if i was going to use that kvike so i'd have to move that beer in like a week or i'm gonna get some really weird phenols because it's that's basically just meant to turn a beer as quickly as possible yeah. mm-hmm. like when we did a, we did a collaboration with Stickman called mumble bee and it was a uh basically a, a an IPA with some lactose, a fuck ton of honey in there. <laughs> we were, that beer was done, carbonated and kegged in like six days or so. Jeez. It was phenomenal, dude. Jeez. If I tried to do that in mead, we would have globs of exploding glass. Yeah. Like it's not going to happen, man. Like, and if it does happen, I'm going to have weird off yeast. So, mm. so no on that one, but okay. I'm sure there's others that we've, you know, tried to play with or whatever else. Um, nothing comes to mind for yeah. sure. Yeah, I was just wondering if there's any like any benefit from a lot of the weird things that have come up in beer in the last couple of years. So not necessarily for me. Like we don't really have uh it's kind of like the it we're the only game, if you will. You mm-hmm. know, there's nobody else really doing exactly what we do. There's other places similar out of state or whatever, but it just kind of ends up being the same for me because I know my process. And I don't necessarily change a ton so that it feels like it's from the exact same brewer because there is no like other brewer or anything like that Mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I don't really venture towards new stuff unless I'm like, holy shit, that's cool. (laughs) But I haven't seen anything that's like really crazy interesting like in the past few years that I want to like really experiment on a three barrel. Right. (laughs) So I wanted to walk back just a little bit. You're talking about yeast. Uh, When it comes to mead on the yeast side, does it tend more towards the wine or is it? tend more towards the beer side when it comes to the yeast so it's both so i use a lot of like cali ale like oh one okay like white lab specific um for actually the both of what we just had or cali one because it's okay. ultra neutral ultra clear reasonably fast flocculates well um my other stuff that's a little bit higher, I use uh, d47 okay which is a, a lavlin it's a white wine yeast which is the it like or the origination of it is basically Saison. Okay. Like that region, like the Bastogne region mm-hmm. um, of Belgium. And so I use that and it's it's almost basically DuPont's house culture, but it doesn't okay. give like a ton of flavor like that, but it gives me a lot higher alcohol content. And then stuff that's over like say 14, 14 mm. or higher, then I use a little bit other heavier okay. yeast. Like I use K1, 1116, another French Lavalin yeast. Okay. Um, so I kind of mull all over the place. Right. But I would say, honestly, on that first TV or, or our, like, main six static products, that's almost all Calio one. Oh, okay. Because it's super chill, super neutral, gives me really nice flavors, not a ton of ale, like, fruity, astery notes. It's just a good yeast. So, has, have you heard if there is any move to a mead-specific yeast, or is it just because you there's such a breadth of opportunity? Yeah, for me, I just do what I know, and that's why I don't experiment. Back okay. to that. All right. But uh, <laughs> as far as like when I see, like again, I like White Labs a lot um, just because I'm old, but um, they have uh, what they call mead and sweet mead, 700 and 720, like vials of yeast. Okay. Though, I don't know exactly where like the origins of those are. Right, you know, right. I'm sure Mr. Malty or somebody would know, but uh, every time I use them, and I've used them on like smaller five gallon batches or something like that, it's overly sweet even for the regular mm-hmm. mead. And it's just not giving me the phenolics and esters that I want. Mm-hmm. So again, to stay like as true to what I've been using for, you know, now damn near what, 18, 19 years, I just stick to the same okay. thing. So if somebody were to get into uh, mead homebrewing, you don't have to go find a mead yeast or anything. No, I like would that. say experiment all day, um, but you don't have to find a mead yeast whatsoever. Okay. I would think your average white wine yeast is going to do the exact same job as long as you're, you know, over the threshold of a beer yeast. Right, right. Okay, okay cool. Yeah, I don't see any real. 
if if I'm trying to create a flavor, like say, man, you know, mango habanero, or like we're going to get into like you know lemon meringue or whatever, mm-hmm. I want those flavors of the fruit and the honey to shine. I want the cleanliness of that water and the nutrients to be correct. Mm-hmm. So any like yeast flavor is almost a no no. We're in beer. I want that flavor. Yeah, right. You know, if we make a hefeweizen <laughs> with like pale ale yeast, like. Yeah. Not, you know, <laughs> what are we even doing? You're either creating a cool category that I've never heard of, or you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Um, so yeah, there's you know there's that. I mean, it's not necessarily meant to be a yeast phenolic heavy product. Mm-hmm. I do have honeymoon, which is one that I, I absolutely use to saison yeast. We ferment it a little bit warmer, and we age it on French oak to give it a little bit more kind of nuance of a white wine, and that does use oh, cool. a white grape, okay. yeah, like a Luna grape. Yeah. Um, that's the that's one of the few that I could name that actually has a specific yeast profile, oh, and it's a little bit more of like an estuary farmhouse kind of yeast that I use. Uh, but, but for the most part, I want clean. Yeah. Okay. So, but other than that, you're more relying on the flavors that you get from the honey oh. and the fruits. That's cool. Absolutely. Right yeah. yeah. No, Did fer- not know fermentation that. characteristics. I don't see have a huge place in mead quite yet. Okay. I'm sure there's meaderies that would argue the yeah. opposite, <laughs> but that's not what Apa strives for. You in know this I mean? house. Yeah. Right the fuck here. I go for cleanliness. <laughs> there's like a there's just like a Belgian mead maker right now just crumbling up notes and just like <laughs> shut up, <laughs> <laughs> fucking esters. <laughs> I'm sure you can knock out something really cool. You know, yeah. use like a chimay yeast with, mm-hmm. ooh, you know, get some like little notes of plum and raisin and honey and just really rich, nice. You, you could probably knock that out. I just have yet to achieve that. Mm-hmm. You know? Write this down. This is another. <laughs> this is a watershed moment. We, we, we We're make a mead. To this. <laughs> we try to make a mead, yeah. but then we try to make it uh, replicate like the, the, the Castile Rouge. Dude, oh, good yeah. luck. <laughs> Charbique cherries, find those in this yeah. country. There's your, there's your start. Um, that would we be awesome. Tag, That's her favorite. We can beer. tag Jeff Bezos. He's got them somewhere in a warehouse. <laughs> Ship them from Brussels. Yeah. Or that, yeah. yeah, dude, those are so expensive. Uh, you could knock that out, though. Honestly, Castile Rouge is one of the best beers. Ooh, like I love it. Yeah, Castile yeah. anything, but yeah. Rouge is the. Yeah. You ever have the nitro? Yeah. Oh yeah. Dude. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I love. I love the. I actually didn't really care for. Um, the, the the dark quad they went when they put that on yeah, the intro yeah. that didn't really work out no so. it was just like brown and muddled yeah and it didn't have too much like real flair to that I mean, yeah and it's also 11 percent, so it's like gas it's like mm. eh, this doesn't work out so great yeah <laughs> back to the back to the rouge nitro yeah. <laughs> Dude, that rouge is something special man. That's so dangerous. it's up there that's that's one of my favorites i mean that that flavor of cherry is just mm-hmm. like an absurd thing yeah yeah i struggle with cherry cherry's tough the last thing we did was our chocolate cherry I use three different cherries mm-hmm. in just to make it not taste like a Luden's cough drop. Right. Because you, if you just do like Monterey cherries or – it's like, dude, what the hell? Like mm-hmm. just use Bing. Good luck. I get three different purees and like blend them together. So I'm like – I tried to use Morello. It's yeah. just like this, this – people are like, this tastes fake. I'm like, yeah, well, 900 pounds of fucking cherries is like fake, you know? Like it's just like – I will show you the boxes. Yeah. You can come out and, you know – drag sludge out of the bottom of the 10-barrel tanks and tell me how fake it was. Does this look fake to you? It's annoying. Full of gloop in the hand. That's the thing. Cherries, man. I could do like blueberries, mangoes, mm-hmm. bananas all day long. No problem. Yeah. You know? But cherries, and like, there's not three types of bananas that I know of. You yeah. Know what no, I mean, I mean like green, eat. yellow, and brown. That's all I know. Yeah, right? Ready or ready or <laughs> overdone. Banana bread. Yeah. E- even the world of beer, like the only – there's only like three beers I can think of that I think do cherries right, and it the Castile we talked about absolutely, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, the the Schuf Nice, yeah, Schuf, yeah. and then uh, Nucleus Wisconsin Belgian Red. Good yeah. luck getting that in this. Yeah, right. I love Wisconsin, yeah. yeah. And good luck even finding it, like any of Schuf or Le Schuf mm-hmm. too. Those are tough to find as well. Schuf is actually easier to find. Oh, well, for sure. Then yeah. Nucleus for sure. <laughs> Nucleus you, you is you gotta yeah. know a guy that knows a guy. Schuf. Just go up to Vintage Estates in Ohio. That is the they only place. It. I actually yeah. go up there probably yeah, twice a go. year, and that's the <laughs> one place I find them. But that's not, you know, yeah. close or common. But I love VA. But that's where it is. Yeah. <laughs> that is exactly that's where it is. is. Um, Jay, I just want to jump a little bit back to your home brewing. And I, th- I think we kind of have an idea of, like, the beers that you like to brew uh, and the recipes that you like. But, like, uh, do you have any recipes from your uh, home brew days that, like, really stuck out to you that you really liked? I and like, was a pretty weird home brewer, to be mm-hmm. honest. I liked not what anybody else liked. I really love just like traditional beer. I'm mm-hmm. a huge Kolsch person. I love Dusseldorf Alts. I've spent time in Germany, Cologne, and Allstadt and specific places like that. But uh, 
I, I like, I think I won the first gluten free beer for trash <laughs> one year. Cause why the hell not? Cause no one was using it. I mean, yeah. um, yeah, I did. And that was, I did, yeah, the first sorghum. It was a South African banana and sorghum being oh, yeah, yeah. first place because there's not a competition there. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? There was no competition. Um, yeah, I, I like weird shit. I don't know. I always went with like fruity stuff. My family always did. I always did a a blueberry hefe and a uh, cherry weizen. Nice. Mm. And two separate beers, you know, yeah. and I would just basically, you know, secondary, Oregon cans, whatever. Those were always like just staples. My family would crush those things. So I did stick to a lot of fruit beers, but a lot of traditional, more traditional stuff. Um, but yeah, nothing really that sticks out like a sore thumb. I mean, honestly, the mead thing back then was like I'd throw in one batch every 30 batches. I'd make mm -hmm. two batches of mead a year. Kind of be like, oh, yeah, this is cool, man. I don't do like a, a strawberry sack mead or I did like a, you know, heather mead where I imported honey from Scotland and ended up being like, even at my cost, like 30 bucks a bottle for, this day, <laughs> for little baby yeah. bottles. Phenomenal. I still have some floating around because I'm like, oh, that's too expensive to drink that. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I just always was like esoteric and weird. I mean, it, even still today, I'm nice. not, not a normal person. <laughs> but I felt like the whole point of brewing was, I, I did a lot of clone. I always bought like clone brews, every version mm. of that. And I would try, I did Orval over and over and over and over. I mean, I still have Orval going at my house at this moment. <laughs> and there, I would say you could probably not tell the difference unless you're an Orval nerd and you've had a few aged ones, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but yeah, I, I always just strove for like, if, if it wasn't clone for something I couldn't find commonly, it was just something I've never had and wanted to have. Just as weird as possible. Like anything we would talk about, I'd be like, all right, I got a couple weekends. Let me start. Some <laughs> shit. And I'll do that here too. That's what people will tell me like, oh man, this would be kind of cool. I'm like, yeah, maybe we'll see what maybe. happens. You know? <laughs> if I can source it and figure it out. So yeah, it's just my, my MO has always been fucking weird. Just a yeah. weird, strange, you know. Hey, it, but it pays off. So yeah, <laughs> that's important. <laughs> yeah. The goal is to be different. I mean, that that's the whole point of homebrewing, right? Just mm -hmm. to be, you're in your own world and you can do whatever you want. Right. And if it sucks, you can dump it even professionally. There's no point in making two hearted because you can just go can buy, buy two it. hearted for fairly cheap. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean that's my goal yeah. is always to be just something I've never seen. Yes, yeah. that leads us to meat. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is like the interesting thing because we're seeing like the resurgence of all these classical German styles come back, and I think it's it, it's really hard for like breweries really have to be hitting a really specific note to make those work sure. because they have to a taste different from the one you can get down the street, but yeah. also they all have to taste different from macro. And they have to be perfect. If yeah. you're talking about a definitive classic style, mm -hmm. you you don't have wiggle room. You have your water, that recipe, you can really minimally tweak it. Yeah. You give me a Kolsch without a noble hop, I'm, I'm not going to drink it. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to be specific. If we just go to a local place that has a blonde ale that calls it a Kolsch, I don't really care. I'm going to drink the beer if it's good beer. Right. But if you're trying to give me a dialed-in thing, so there, there's not much wiggle room there, you know right. what I mean? Because you have nerds that are <laughs> like me that love this, and then they, they're going to know the difference. And the whole time, uh, you can ask her, I'm like, yeah, we well, could just call it a blonde ale. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, you're a smug ass. I'm like, yeah, well, I like cultures, man. You know, like, you know. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of people playing with that uh, that that phrase, Kolsch style. Oh, yeah. And uh, – I had one. I had one recently. It wasn't bad. Which one was that? It was it was the one from Pipeworks. Oh, okay. Because it was a co it was a Kolsch style, but also partnered with a meadery, or no, it partnered with a cidery, right? B cider. Okay. And like it was an apple Kolsch style. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I don't know. Playing a little fast and loose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's the thing. So as soon as you tell me it's a, a I'm glad you said the cidery thing. Because I'd be yeah. like, no, it's acid aldehyde. You don't know how to brew a blonde ale. <laughs> High Park knows what they're doing. But like, yeah, there's, why isn't it a blonde ale? Yeah, yeah. We have <laughs> styles for a reason. You know, dude, everyone doesn't have to stick to specific guidelines and be crazy about it. But I am, so. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, and honestly, it was, it did taste like crispier than like just what I guess most of us would remember as a blonde ale, sure. which were just like just blonde and malty and mm -hmm. like kind of my least favorite style of beer. They're just, yeah. then that's why people ditch that word. Yeah. I mean, people are like, eh, blonde ale. There's very few, like I can sell like hitchhiker conversion. That's a great beer. Mm -hmm. Like it's a really simple, chill, six and a half percent great beer. Yeah. 
but a lot of people have veered away from blondes in general because right. it doesn't and everybody started using stupid ass innuendo like it's a dirty blonde oh, yeah. it's like mm-hmm. get the, the fuck out of this. <laughs> get out of the beer world if you can't name your beer man like <laughs> what was it that we put down laws that we're going to sue everybody who uses blonde bombshell in 2022 yes <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird man yeah. it's like if, if you're selling that that way like mm-hmm. i don't even name anything there's very like bomb first is the only thing that's named on the list mm-hmm. right now and it's like it's a good Tupac song. That's your yeah. that's your fault for not knowing. You know what I mean? The rest of it's like raspberry. Well, it says raspberry. Everything else can sell itself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I'm already confusing you with meat and shit. So, like, <laughs> what's meat? Oh, well, what's in the bomb? And well, I'm like, lady, there's a line. We don't like, have time. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, move it along yeah, already. Like, Avismead.com. I'll yeah. see you in ten minutes. You know, it'll explain everything for you. Pick the flavor you recognize. Get out of line. <laughs> Seriously, dude. Talk to the guy at the corner of the bar. He'll tell you everything else. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna. Set up your flight for you. <laughs> well, speaking of flavors we recognize, we recognize mango and habanero. Yes. Yeah, they oh were there. Boy. They were there. They're gone now. They're, oh, they've yeah. been gone. Long, long <laughs> gone. I actually, uh, I delayed the last sip. Mm-hmm. I, I, I hung on to it. I tried to wait until this portion of the segment. Yeah. Didn't make it. Nah. Yeah. Didn't make it. I had to get try. that last bit. <laughs> yeah. Big fan of this one. Thanks, man. Big yeah. fan. I, I have a little residual smell is what I had left. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean. Like it, it doesn't have like that real hot, uh, doesn't have like a hot smell to it. No, as like we've seen with beer, some beers, especially ones we brew. Yes, uh, but <laughs> like it, it is sweet up front, as we said before, and it, it tapers off into a nice heat. Mm-hmm. But it's not a. I find it to not be a challenging heat. No, it is. It is a. It kind of a step into the heat realm. Yeah, yeah. approachable. Again, yeah. we have a ghost pepper one. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, there's the jalapeno, which is nice and fruity for your tacos. Mm-hmm. This one was like, I like pepper. Cool. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah. Then the you know the ghost guava. You're like, I fucking hate you. Then there's yeah. stuff under the bar. <laughs> or love you. Yeah. <laughs> well, then yeah, there could always be homebrew. And this is all you know surface contact time for that. That habanero. If I left it in there one more day, mm-hmm. gone. Mm-hmm. It would be through the roof hot. So it's yeah. really just that contact time, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you still have to be able to sell it. Oh, absolutely. It's got to be a marketable thing. Yeah. You're going to take a bottle of that home and open it for Christmas. The rest of your family, like it might be you and your brother in law, they're like, oh, yeah. And everyone's like, get that out of here, man. Like, give us bomb first back or whatever. You know, you energy only gets you so far. Seriously. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, there's things you can do, like on original, where you're literally making fun of the industry. But it's a lighthearted, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Like, get off the thing, like, make something all, original. We're all in it together. Yeah, yeah. But the, if you do that to every customer, that's it. You're done. Yeah. Right. You can't be an asshole. <laughs> done. There's, there's nothing special about this. We're just making honey into wine. It's yeah. not really. I'm not Jesus. You know. <laughs> Despite the long hair and beard. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, my skin color is pretty light. <laughs> yeah. Not, yeah. Not quite right. Unless you're, you know, Texas America. Then right. No. <laughs> You can pass. No, I'm from I'm from Pittsburgh. Yeah. Total wrong country, nowhere near the Nile. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, uh, I mean again, it it could be it, it could be the trash person in me, but I really did want some like mango habanero buffalo wild wings. That sounds that. pretty good. I get yeah. That. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's the trash person in me. But it, I mean, sometimes you pair things to make compliments and sometimes you pair things because they're just the same thing. Oh, yeah. And like it, I really could see like just that nice sweetness because then you get into a different cycle. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so you have with the mead, you just have the cycle of, oh, it's sweet up front, hot on the back. But then you do sweet up front, hot on the back, sweet wing, hot on the back, sweet mead. And then you do that cycle. And every once in a while you hit a double hot. Yeah. In here, resonance. <laughs> Sounds good to me, man. I, I'm in. And then next thing you know, you're drunk and fat on fucking wings and mead. <laughs> also sounds good to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just saying that's what at happens. all. <laughs> Do they have a, ha- a mango habanero wing there? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like the one I, it, it's like I get an order of those and an order of Jamaican jerk. I'm good. That sounds good. Dude. I haven't <laughs> been there in 10 years or whatever. They had a commercial making fun of homebrewers and I was like, mm. that's it. I'm out. Never going to shop there well, again. Then, uh, Big Shot Bob's. They gotta have something like oh, that. Oh yeah, big shop pops sure. definitely for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Did you ever see that commercial though? The, oh yeah, I've yeah. seen. Yeah, they they've had a number of like anti beer commercials because yeah. they're all they're pushing is fucking macros and Sam Adams. Yeah, yeah, they're like, like oh, don't let a homebrewer make your beer. And I'm like, the best beers I've ever had are easily from home. Yeah, you know, and I've had some of the best <laughs> beers in the world. Luckily, the best ones I've ever had are like competition beers. Mm-hmm. They're from some dude who you're like, who the hell's that weirdo? Oh shit, this is perfect. Yes. You know what I mean? There is some. 
killer homebrewers in this city that have mm-hmm. either moved on, went to commercial, or just stuck to being a badass homebrewer. Yeah. See, that, that always rubbed me the wrong they, way. They, I don't really necessarily <laughs> like them or dislike them, but I was always like, fuck you, I'm a homebrewer. Yeah. I'm yeah. not going now and drinking <laughs> goddamn Bud Light or whatever. I'm not getting my money anymore. Right, yeah. Yeah, a lot of homebrewers are like, a lot of homebrewers are almost like session musicians. Mm-hmm. So like they're the guys who come in the studio and they do it right and perfect for the album. And then oh, yeah. right back out. But they're not interested in being on stage. They're not interested in having the business. They're not, you know. <laughs> it can ruin your fun for it, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's that's one thing I would say I've learned from owning a business. If I wasn't in love with this industry, the people in this industry, and like creating art in some sort of liquid form, mm-hmm. I would be, I would just quit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, whether it was at the homebrew store or whatever, or at Penn or any whatever other brewery I worked at. If it just became bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's like you, you – if I didn't love it, it would be like, all right, dude, this is, it's a lot of work. I mean, mm-hmm. it's a ton of stuff and you have to constantly produce. I mean, there's, you know, there's a demand pretty much weekly for like, say, Hitchhiker, or you name your favorite oh, yeah. brewery right, to put yeah. out two, three, four cans or you're mm-hmm. not the biggest in the city. Mm-hmm. And even for us, I can't do obviously three or four a week. I'm not Hitchhiker. That's <laughs> nuts. Good job, Hitchhiker. Though. You're crushing that shit. Um, but yeah, I mean, once a month for us, sometimes twice, depending on heavy summers or, you know, what type of fruits are available. Is still a lot, man. I mean, it's, it's you know production, constantly producing something. And it's got to be perfect. Mm-hmm. There's no like half ass, like oh yeah, well your steak's overdone. Like no man, <laughs> nope, nope. It's perfect. Ask for medium rare. I need lemon bourbon, dude. You know what I mean? Like so, yeah, I could see that. That's the one thing. Any other business, I've always thought like oh I could go do this or this or whatever. Like you know, in my past, I'm 40 now, so would, in my 20s, I'm like I'm gonna open a cool business. I would have quit that shit in two days. There's no way. I would have, I would have quit immediately. Luckily here, there's a bunch of cool people. I mean, yeah. There's good liquid. And, yeah, and yeah. we've heard that time and again, talking to, talking sure. to brewers. Everybody says the same thing. You know, I'm so, sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's an easy thing to fall in love with because of the people, because of the crowd. And you do get to produce stuff. Not right, that you right. have to, but you get to. Right, right. right. Yep. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, we're going to take another break. We are. And we're going to come back with a third mead. And then a game. Yes, the great American bee quiz. Oh, the boy. time and some <laughs> Yeah. Games. All right. So we'll see you in a minute. Cool. Are you tired of watching the same old awesome movies? Are B-movies more your style? Then the folks over at They Call This A Movie have you covered. Join us every Thursday as we review the worst of the worst in sci-fi, action, comedy, and more. We are available on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, and Podbean at theycallthisamovie.podbean.com. They Call This A Movie, testing the strength of friendships one terrible movie at a time. Welcome back to episode 244 of the Hop Nation USA podcast, and we're still live at Apis Meadery, and we're still with Dave, and we're still looking at pinball machines, wishing we could play instead of doing podcasts, but, you know, hey. Almost. So this is going to be a quick <laughs> segment. Yeah. <laughs> 15 minutes, we're in a pinball. Pops, in and out. We'll leave the mics on. <laughs> you, can, you can hear us get high scores. You'll hear Jack Yeah. <laughs> but uh, with that, uh, that means we do have a third meet as well. So, Dave... Tell us about this one. So this is our lemon meringue pie mead. We don't have seriously a pie. It doesn't say pie on the label, but there's a giant piece of pie on there. So um, this simply is uh, Meyer lemon, vanilla. Um, that's pretty much it. There's a touch of lactose in there. There isn't much else going on. It's meant to be upfront uh, citrusy, not quite sour lemon. Mm-hmm. Like if you use just regular lemon, it would be like overly sour. Right. But the, the Meyer gives it that like almost like eucalyptus citrusy, like fresh, vibrant, like zestiness. And then the, you know, the lactose and vanilla just kind of tones it down, kind mm. of, you know, reminiscent of, you know, the meringue. But when you think about the lemon meringue pie, you think like, in my head, I think like Eaton Park. I don't know if that's just me, but it's like a two inch <laughs> lemon and then like a nice, like, you know, inch and a half of whipped on there. So it's like a decent balance. Um, I feel like this also kind of mimics that balance. Mm. Some of our other products, we go so far on the, you know, like cheesecake is so much cheese in your face. This one I wanted the lemon forward. You know what I mean? Mm. So, so eight and a half percent, um, four ingredients. You know, <laughs> this is one hundred percent clover honey. So it's not wildflower buckwheat okay. or anything. So it's a really, really light, docile honey. Um, simple, simple drink of mead. I, I took the first sip on this, and my first and immediate thought was summertime. Absolutely. Yeah. This yeah. is this is dead of summer, sitting by the pool, having yourself a good day. This just came out. So this was uh, March. Mm-hmm. I think it was the 
March 11th, like the second Friday of each month, we try to release something. And uh, yeah, it, you know, Pittsburgh, you never know what the weather, but I was hoping <laughs> for like good weather. Uh, but yeah, this is our entering spring. You know, mm-hmm. like I said, we release at least one thing a month. This is our entering spring. Nice lemony in your face, kind of like citrusy, just, just kind of a chill mead really in general. Like, you know exactly what you're getting with it. It's not too much vanilla, not too much lactose, right. not too much of the dessert mead. Mm-hmm. It's not so heavy and rich and syrupy. Even when we say dessert stuff, we're not saying like undrinkability on, you know, too cloyingly sweet or whatever. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I guess, I guess I got a little tripped up on that because like you said dessert and then I was thinking, I was really expecting something like really thick and sweet the same way when we think of like dessert beers sure. and like loop glop beers. But like Adam said, the first thing he thought was summertime. First thing I thought was brunch. Yeah. I'm like, this is like a Sunday morning just chilling out and then mm-hmm. like having like fresh fruits and eggs and shit. <laughs> and that's the thing. I mean, you, I think you can do dessert stuff without being mm-hmm. cloyingly heavy or sweet. Mm-hmm. I think you can have brunch with this, yeah. but I don't necessarily want to have brunch with, you know, like a, an imperial stout that ends at like 10, 24 right. or whatever, you know, right. like I don't like, I mean, also I might though, if it's Piper's and it's imperial brunch, I'm in right. period, right. you know, that's the kind of thing we're doing. But I, yeah, I mean, so the point is we can do dessert stuff without being ultra heavy. Mm-hmm. Some stuff gets a little bit heavier than this, but I really strive for drinkability and the flavor that we say is in there. Yeah. If I call it lemon meringue, I really want you to taste the meringue. Mm. I want you to taste the egg, even though it's not there. I want you to taste the now <laughs> I want you to taste lactose and then obviously lemon. Yeah, yeah, it it is very bright, and you definitely get that. Uh, you definitely get that lemon up front, and it isn't sour like you're saying. So like, like don't expect like a sour citrus. I'm trying to think of. It's not pucker inducing. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think of a beer that would embody that. But uh, fuck, the only thing I can think of is that evil twin. You can stop remember, right there. Ooh, remember, it was like <laughs> bikini sour or some uh, shit. Like I know which one you're talking about. Yeah, and it was like all lemon. It was all pucker, and it was terrible. This isn't that. So yeah, <laughs> and the the lemon can be like our lemon bourbon. It's also on lacto in a barrel. Mm-hmm. But even before I put the lemon into the barrel, because I ferment it for about a week or so and just kind of get through that initial and then go into a barrel, it's still really, really lemony. And those are just traditional lemons. When I do Meyer lemons, this is from Oregon Puree. It was just like really really citrusy and eucalyptusy and like zesty it didn't have like mouth curdling sour yeah. if you will you know what i mean <laughs> so there is apparently a huge difference in those types of lemons this is actually the first year we did this product so okay. this is brand new to us oh, right. it's only about a month or so okay a month and a week old today so so i guess that that does beg a bit of a question because I, I had talked about this reminds me of summertime in terms of shelf life not that typically i would have a problem if i had this in my fridge sure but is there any sort of you know time constraint when it comes to mead or anything like that? I know with a lot of IPAs, you're supposed to drink it as soon as possible. For, yeah, quote, not unquote, at all for freshness. Us. Yeah, I mean, we're obviously with the IPAs, go for like the dankest. Mm-hmm. Like I, I turn over every can I'm buying. I turn over <laughs> cases. They think I'm crazy at the beer sugar. If I'm buying an IPA, I want it to be killer. I mean, mm-hmm. I go to local bars to have a pint, and usually that pint is going to be an IPA because I know it's a fresh keg. Mm-hmm. I can't get that at my house. I can, but I don't as much because I don't really keep beer at my house, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, but as far as us, I mean, I would say everything in the cooler is usually good for two to three years. So if you buy a ball or two, you don't need to like rush through it. Okay. Now, something like blueberry chai, which has like a, a reasonable heavy chai spice, mm-hmm. a chai spice might die off. Uh, something like unoriginal or even the hops in the bomb first, those eventually will break down. Right. You might get some light struck. It is a clear bottle. Mm-hmm. You know, over time, it, it might kind of just die off, break down. Um, but for for the most part, unless, unless it's hopped or or spiced, it's going to remain kind of the same. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think this would probably be the exact same product in two years. Right. It might change a little bit of like acidity might drop out or whatever, but mm. no, not, no real rush here. Nothing to make a fuss about. Not at all. No, you can grab a bottle and sit on it for six months, throw it under your counter in your basement or in your fridge. No big deal. Nice. Nice. Good to know. <laughs> make me a squirrel hole. Well, hey, you know, just like, when I win the Powerball, mm-hmm. and which I will, I, I have appreciate to. your yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I have a wine cellar. I have to know what to do with it, <laughs> right? <laughs> I think we have an answer, right? And the, the answer is put in honey wine because I don't like regular wine. There you so. go. <laughs> just rotate them from the bottom, yeah. you know, to the top shelf or whatever. Just new ones go in the bottom, top ones go in your liver, and call yeah. it a day. <laughs> here's here's my apis side. Here's my shram side. Here's there you my- go. Yeah, <laughs> shrams, shrams for the win, right there. There you go. 
And that's a whole different product than us. I mean, those guys are so badass. I learned a good amount from Ken Trey, oh, yeah. his books and everything. Um, but it, he's such a different like person when it comes to uh, fermenting than I am. It's not even close. Like his stuff and my stuff, you put on the shelf. People may think those are two different types of product. Hmm. That's how different we are in a good way. You yeah, know? Yeah, he's so yeah, traditional yeah. and so really like robust with fruit. And we're like striving for like way lighter, way more drinkable meads. So mm, yeah. shout out to Ken Shram. That's a killer <laughs> meads right there. If you can find them. And it just states there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what do you say we get into segment three? Yeah. The great American bee quiz. Yeah. Is everybody ready? Yeah. Sure. All right. So this is how this is going to work. This is a very simple game. Uh, it's multiple choice. Uh, we'll go back and forth. I'll give you the question. If you think you can answer it correctly without any of the options, I will give you two points. If you don't feel that you can get it, I'll give you the options. And if you get it correct, you get one point. If you get the question wrong, the other person has the opportunity to steal for one point. Very simple. Fair enough. We're not yep. splitting the atom here. Nope. <laughs> We're just having a little bit of fun. But who wants to go first, Steve? Yeah, sure. There you go. That's <laughs> All right. Your first question is, is a very easy one. Uh-huh. Is honeybee one word or two? You're an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Let me Google it while I stand. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you do multiple choice on that if it's either or? Right. A Would you like to find B. out? <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. Not yet. I think I think it's just simply two words. It's honey and then bee. Honey bee. That is incorrect. Yeah, stupid. <laughs> Would you like to see? <laughs> well, it's it's obviously one word. <laughs> that is also incorrect. Ooh. Would you like to hear the choices? Sure. So your choices are one word, two words, both. Or neither. Oh, the I guess it's both. Is it's acceptable. Both. Okay. Huh. It all depends on who you ask. Weird. If you ask the, the dictionary, it is one word. If you ask entomologists, it is two words. Huh. But both are considered correct. Weird. All right. There you go. Fucking buck nerds ruining everything. <laughs> <laughs> I think the question changed the answer because you said, how do you spell the word? <laughs> <laughs> There's no S. <laughs> Shit. Anyway, call it a Z. We're all around or negative two or whatever we get. You get what you pay for. <laughs> all right. Honey oh, wine. Ready for question number two. How many eyes do honeybees have? Oh, man. Uh, 16. No. I'm multiple not. chases are available. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do multiple. I have no idea. Your choices are two, four, five, or seven. Mm, I guess we're going to go with two. That would be incorrect. Fair enough. Steve, your options are five four, and, five, five and seven are weird. or seven. Yeah, five and seven sound weird, but it also like maybe they have a backup camera. That's <laughs> <laughs> all they know where to sting you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, man, bug eyes are weird too. Right. Because they're always, cause it's probably like four, but they're, they probably fractalize down to 16. 16 is not an option. I know it's not an option, but they, you, <laughs> you know. can answer that, but it'll be wrong. I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go four. That is also incorrect. Damn, they have a backup camera. They so do have a backup camera. The answer is five. Oh, yeah. Do we know where that fifth eye is? No. Oh, I, I don't, I don't have know. to I Google that. I didn't go that deep into research. I'll be All honest. Right. Fair enough. Bees are very spiritual. They have <laughs> right. a fifth eye. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's a weird gland. But have. yes, that is uh, that is information from uh, NASA and Texas A and M. Whatever. Bunch of dork shit. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> don't don't be mad at me. All right. Steve, are you ready for your question? I don't think so, compared to the last two questions. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> All right, well, you're going to get it anyways. Yeah. Because the show's got to keep rolling. Yeah. Per AmericanBeeJournal.com, how much honey is needed to fuel a bee's flight around the world? Oh, God. Oh. Around the world? Around the world. Well, I'm going to need those. Yeah. Well, that could be choices. <laughs> that could be anything. Your options I don't are, even know what units to start in. <laughs> <laughs> One gram... One ounce, one liter, or one barrel? A, a barrel sounds right. That's what you're going with? Yeah. Around the yeah. world. That is incorrect. Wow, bees are efficient. <laughs> they are efficient. They, they absolutely more, are. More bees to, to run our cars. Around the world, huh? For yes, the I'll... steel, you have one gram, one ounce, or one liter remaining. I guess I want to think one ounce. That is correct. All right. Wow. <laughs> really? The deadlock has been broken. They only need an ounce? 
Yeah. Well, they don't. Yeah, they don't use much energy. I mean, they're just little guys. They can't carry much either. Yeah. They're yeah, just, but I, I know they're just little guys, but only an ounce to get around the entire world. Mm-hmm. I, uh, yeah. I man, don't yell at me. Yell at the good people of AmericanBeeJournal dot com. <laughs> <laughs> I now, cite my sources. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> now I need to ask how how much does a hummingbird need? Because that's what that's kind of what I was basing on. Oh, you see, a hummingbird is not a honeybee. I know, but that's it's the only thing I have is like they both like sweet shit and they're both small. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I know hummingbirds use a lot of calories. This they're is crazy. true. This they is do. true. Yeah. But no, the ounce is the correct answer. All right. And are you ready for your next question? Sure. All right. What color are honeybees unable to see? Um, Go ahead with the multiples. Your options are red, blue, green, or yellow. Blue. That is incorrect. All right. Green. That is also incorrect. <laughs> Damn it. It's red then. <laughs> it is red. Yeah. I it knew it was something primary. Because either they see all three primaries or, mm-hmm. or they have the the... Blue, yellow, color blindness. There you go. It was red. Uh, red is your answer. Damn. Random. Steve, are you ready for your next question? Oh, no. <laughs> these are hard. <laughs> this one's tough. Yeah. This is. There will be no survivors. All right, Steve. Your question is: A cocktail consisting of gin and honey with lemon and orange juice is better known as what? Give me the choices. Your choices oh. are a yellow jacket, a fallen for pollen, the bee's knees. Or a buzz bomb. I don't drink gin. <laughs> <laughs> um, Go down to Quantum if you want some. I don't want stuff. gin. <laughs> don't one, drink one block away. You know, <laughs> like block walking distance. I've done it before. <laughs> Seriously. What was A? A is a yellow jacket. Uh, I'm going to go B's knees. Correct. Steve is on the board. You knew that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Nice. Anybody in this building would know that. Yeah, I'll, I sell gin and honey. So. Yeah. <laughs> and I have a, yeah, the quantum right down the street. Right. They have a bee's knees on constantly. So we are now tied at one, going into question number six. Are you ready to break this tie? <laughs> sure, yeah. How many right. questions are there? <laughs> B. Arthur won two Emmys in her lifetime, one for her role as Dorothy Jonkin on The Golden Girls. What show did she win her other Emmy on? Maud. That is worth two points. <laughs> Holy shit. B. Arthur's my bitch. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just <laughs> no, I'm a TV nerd. I know a lot of stupid TV shows. She's a commanding lead now. Because she, there's nothing else for B. Arthur. I'm sorry. There, I can't name anything else. Not really, no. So she actually had an Emmy nomination for a role she had on Malcolm in the Middle. Oh, cool. I did not know Interesting. that. Interesting. I didn't yeah. either. I watched that show, too. I, like yeah, that I show. didn't even know she was on that until today. She was on it for probably two episodes or something. Uh, right. she, she was nominated for a guest appearance. Yeah. Oh, okay. And now you know. Yeah, now you know. Be Arthur, be Arthur filmography. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Great, something we can forget immediately. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Steve, are you ready? Sure. All right. Just as a friendly reminder, you are losing three to one. <laughs> yeah. The Bees are a triple-A minor league baseball team located in what major American city? God damn it. That is not the answer. <laughs> Have you seen the videos from the guys who are like the bananas or whatever? The bananas? Yeah, there's like a there's like a minor league banana team. They're always like doing dances before they throw pitches and shit. Uh, I, splits or whatever. That, yeah, I, I think so. I, don't they do something weird where if a fan catches a foul ball, it's an automatic out? It might be. That's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool. <laughs> they're, they're, they're like the Harlem Globetrotters of yes, baseball. Not but. to be confused with the Rocket City Trash Pandas. Yeah. My uh, favorite minor league baseball team. That's a good name, too. Well, give me city choices. Your options are Portland, Charlotte, Salt Lake City, or Birmingham. Salt Lake City. Steve is on the board. Nice. It's the Beehive State. My question was going to be, is it like the bees or B-E-E bees? You know, like the Boston Bee or... Right, no, it right. is the B-E-E-S. B- okay. Bees. Yeah, gotcha. Yes. I'm going to throw a bonus question out out there. Okay. For both of you. Okay. First answer gets the point. Go for it. The Salt Lake City Bees are an affiliate of what Major League Baseball team? Oh. I'll go with Seattle Mariners. That is incorrect. Cool. I mean, a chance the, to steal. Yeah, no, I have no idea. Just throw nothing about baseball. Uh, what city were we in? Uh, Salt Lake, Utah. Salt Lake. Yeah. 
Um, Say San Diego. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to think of anything in that area. That's probably honestly one of their closer. I'll say Pirates just for fucking because it's opening day. <laughs> <laughs> it is not the Pirates. I know. <laughs> but they're black and yellow and it's right. opening day, so fuck it. Uh, no, they are an affiliate of the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. No. I wouldn't have gone there. Yeah. there you go. Shout out to Mike Trout. <laughs> <laughs> See, one of two people I know on that team. There you go. <laughs> All right. Last question. Luigi, the most famous B player of all time, first debuted in what year? B player? B player. Player A, player B. Like on we bet we still baseball in here? No, no. No. No, no. I know what he's saying. <laughs> As in Mario and Luigi. Oh shit. Sorry, so rephrase the question or re say it, please. Luigi, the most famous B player of all time, first debuted in what year? Nineteen in America or Japan? In general. His first appearance, 1984 in Japan, 86 in America. Incorrect. Okay. Steve, would you like to steal? Choices. Your choices are 1979, 1981, 1983, or 1985. Oh, that's tough. Hmm. I'm going to go with 83. And Steve ties it up. Oh, geez. Because he actually showed up on a handheld game first. From Game of Watch, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I almost want to give you a point just for that. I don't <laughs> call that out. I don't think it was technically Luigi back then, but we'll let it roll. According to Wikipedia, it was just man <laughs> and the other man. Right? Yeah, because it was Jump Man. Jump Man. Through yeah. uh, the Donkey Kong series. And then. And even for a game of watch, was also still just Jump Man. Yeah. Luigi technically showed up in the end of Mario 1, which would be 1986, I would believe. I think I'm getting. <laughs> it doesn't matter here. whatever it's, it's you know <laughs> like you're not you might be right i don't know i'm just going with the information i have but according to it wouldn't be jump man and luigi it would be, <laughs> there right. was no mario jump it was, mario and other was jump in donkey man. kong but was not in the other but anyway but all that being said we are currently tied oh no at three points apiece oh, so a pinball for the win <laughs> we have a bonus question so i will give you both an opportunity to answer okay uh, there are no multiple choices. Your answer is your answer. Fair enough. So there's no time limit. You don't have to buzz in first or anything like that. Type B negative blood type is found in what percentage of the American population? That's your question. And it's closest? Closest without going over. Without going over? Yes. Or just closest. You know, all right, yeah, closest. <laughs> closest. Sure, you write down our I'll, answers. I'll be nice. Now you can just throw them out there. Uh, let me think about it for a second. Type B negative Type is found B in what percentage negative. of the American population? I'm going to say it's going to be in the uh, 55%. All right. You said American or worldwide? American. American. Yes. I'll, I'll stick to the same answer. Steve? I'll say 33%. 33%. Yeah. And with that, congratulations, Steve. You are the winner. Hurrah. Uh, according to the American Red Cross, less than 2%. Less than 2 for B yes. negative. Yes, have okay. B negative blood flowing through them. Okay. That was kind of my other thinking. Like it was only around 3 or 4% because mm -hmm. I think it's like AB negative is like the... Super the hard hardest. Hard. Yes. Yeah, the hardest mm -hmm. to come by. Uh, B positive clocks in at about 9%. Of the population. So there you go. Jeez, all right. Most people are A and O. A O. A O. Random B question. Right? <laughs> no one's limping away from this quiz. No. Warp, warp. This is the one time I get to feel good about myself. <laughs> there you go, dude. Because <laughs> I, I don't get to lose. I was like, how the hell is he going to vote B questions? More than two of them. Right. Because you know? <laughs> it's blood types and B Arthur. I got <laughs> it now. Right. He'll find a way. But okay, well, we won and lost, and everybody had a good time. <laughs> I like to think the listeners won. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm sure. Uh, hopefully, they all learned something. Yeah, mm -hmm. where to find Maud? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maud probably is on Tubi. Go check oh, that dude, out. It's for free on Tubi. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is. But all right, well, with that, let's come back to the lemon meringue mead. Yes, and uh, just any final notes on that? I I enjoyed it. As did I. Yeah. Uh, I, I appreciate that it's 
it is desserty without being obnoxiously desserty, yeah. if that makes sense. That's the goal. I want you to have a glass, not mm. like half a glass. And be yeah. like, okay, that's enough. Right. And I also don't want to give diabetes to my friends. Right. That's <laughs> nice. That's just <laughs> a good tenant to have. Yeah, life. there you go. Well, that's also how you keep repeat customers. <laughs> <laughs> He's fine. He just doesn't have any feet anymore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> Too far? Uh, All right. Nah, nah, right. <laughs> no, no. We said way worse. Too far for him. <laughs> right. right on point for me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, overall, though, no, this is a really good uh, mead, and I really like that, you know, with the desserty, it's a good dessert for the summertime. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, because a lot of the desserts in the beer world are, you know, sitting by a campfire in a late November. Totally. And you're just trying to stay warm, that yeah. kind of stuff. This is not it. This is light. This is bright. This is summertime drinking. Thanks. Yeah, yeah early I, spring. I shoot for that usually, mm-hmm. like even the other ones, like even peanut butter and jelly. As much as you're thinking like, oh, man, that's going to be heavy duty peanut butter and bread and this and that. It's it's really still crushable. It's mm-hmm. still a drinkable. I still can have. I'm not drinking a bottle. Don't don't, <laughs> yeah. don't want to lie to you. <laughs> but the three of us would split a bottle. No problem. You mm-hmm. know, but I'll have a glass, you know, once in a while here or there. But yeah, it's not that imperial stout, heavy, rich, you know, what people think yeah. of this traditional stuff. So I, I feel like, yeah. If you can do something like that, again, the whole strive is drinkability mm-hmm. and to change your opinion on mead, you know. If you yes. come in and you're like, I don't know what mead is, but I like lemon and, and lemon ranks my favorite dessert. I do that, you're good, man. Mm-hmm. Here you yep. go. Here's yeah. your glass. You know, that's welcome to the club. Right? <laughs> People are like, damn, all right, what else you got? <laughs> and I usually do a bunch of citrusy stuff this early in the year. Citrus doesn't like go super well for us. It's just a kind of a finicky beast. It's either too sour. It doesn't clear well, blah, blah, blah. But I'll do two or three lemony kind of things in a row, grapefruity things. Mm -hmm. Early now, people seem to love them early spring. It seems like that's the citrus time of year for us. Because it's that kind of the first sign of spring, and everybody just gloms onto that. something bright. Yeah, exactly. I need this in my life. Absolutely. (laughs) It's a sign of the inevitable. And that's usually the goal. Sell people what they want at the time they want it. Don't (laughs) leave it lingering around, you know? Yeah. People definitely want bright stuff and, like, you know, like I was saying, like, this is like a bright Sunday morning brunch, mm-hmm. you know, like if you, if you don't necessarily want like a white wine or a Prosecco or some shit like that, you can easily substitute this in and it'll oh, go yeah. with your fruit salad or you know, whatever the fuck you're having. Absolutely. So, yeah. 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 I feel like the vanilla in there just tones down that super tartness that mm-hmm. should be there just enough to make mm-hmm. it just crushable. You know? Yeah. All right. Well, this is the point of the episode where we come to the podium and we rank all three meads that we had tonight, bronze, silver, gold. And Dave, you're going to go last because you get to rank your babies. Fair enough. <laughs> I got them already. I see. Oh, all right. Yeah, all right. That's all right. All right. Uh, but Adam, do you have do you have a ranking? I don't. Not all yet. Right. Not all yet. Right. All right. Do you? Uh, I could probably put one together pretty easily. Okay. Good. Because I'm still mulling over it. Yeah. I'll be honest. And that's so, a good problem. <laughs> so I think uh, I think bronze, I'm going to go lemon meringue. I like it, but just like citrus and lemon isn't always my favoriteist. You know, it's, it's, a, it's good, and I think people will enjoy it, and people will definitely enjoy it for right now because it's bright and summery. But, you know, it, it's not my favorite of the three I've had tonight. Sure. Silver, I'm going to go with the mango habanero. And that's... that's it's closer to gold than it is anything <laughs> else, but it, it's just simply because it is hot and that you don't always want hot. It's, it's, it's great. I love it. And it's everything I want from something that's like mango habanero because all the flavors are there, but I just don't always want hot. Don't always want spicy. Mm, I get that. But the, the, uh, yeah, the one that we had at the beginning that it's, Berries and hops. <laughs> and uh, even though we're trying to get away from beer, we're steering <laughs> away from beer this episode, it has such a great flavor profile because you get all of the berries up front, but then you get like the earthy hopness on the back and it's clean drinking and it's just everything is there. It keeps dragging you right back in. Yeah. That's kind of its goal. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's more like, hey, you don't know what meat is? Try this. It's just kind of in between. It's not really beer, mead, wine. It's just its thing. You know? mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why I think a lot of people gravitate towards that product. Mm-hmm. And I, I just think like on a long enough timeline, I'll stop tasting the sweet of the mango habanero mm-hmm. and I'll just taste all hot. Sure. On a long right. enough timeline. Right. 
but I still will get both notes of the other one of the hops and the berry mm. for a longer period of time. So that's why that one gets gold. I can probably drink it longer. Okay, then. Fair enough. <laughs> until my palate blows up. <laughs> oh yeah, a tale as old as time. Uh, for me, I think I I think I have my answer. But uh, yeah, the actually. Uh, gonna go in the exact opposite of what you had steve <laughs> i also was yeah, <laughs> but uh yeah for me with with the hops uh when when you're here i i kind of want to get away from that now that being said if you've never listened to the show before i am not a hop head you know that is that is not my jam you know i i like to go for more of the classic styles you hand me a heffy i'm good to go sure uh so with this with this mead it is good that it is a stepping stone to get those beer drinkers, you know, those those haze bros, you know, get them pulled away from that into the meat arena a little bit. You know, that's a good stepping stone to get them in here. And I think that is a very good thing. But I don't need that. Because, I, you know, I'm already here. I'm already amped, right, you know, yeah. to try this stuff. You've had the products. Right, exactly. Uh, and since I'm not necessarily a hophead, you know, it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, you know, work for me in that regard. It's still good, and I'm still going to drink more of it. But just for that, it's going to go in the bronze medal position. The mango habanero, just like Steve said, it is closer to gold than, than bronze. It is a really good meat. I really enjoy it. Uh, it has that, that residue on it, that spice residue that just coats your, your throat, and it sticks around. It lets you know what's going on, but it does that without being obnoxious with its heat. Sure. You know, it does it. It does it well. I don't think quite well in that regard. That it it shows up. It's got that heat, but then it kind of you know steps aside a little bit. It lets you try other things. It doesn't dominate the night. You know, it's not one of those things where you drink it and that's all you have for the rest of the night. Burns you, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but uh, this lemon meringue, I really like it. And as soon as I as soon as I took that first sip and it it shot me to a poolside, you know. Ready to have a good day in the sunshine. This there's an automatic. Yeah, this is what I need in my life. Especially right now with it being spring, swapping over into the, the hotter temperatures. This is what I want by my side. So with that, it's going in the gold medal position. Fair enough. Can't knock that, man. So now it is time. I would now it's your say, turn. <laughs> for me, it's so easy. I would say the sidecar of the cheesecake is bronze. The <laughs> Jenny cream ale is silver. <laughs> and the conversation with you two guys is gold. Oh, oh, damn. Oh. <laughs> so, no, thank you guys so much for having me. But I do want to answer, so I would put Bomb first at number one. I'm going to go in reverse for fun. Mm. I, I just love the product. I could drink that all day long. Even though I make it, I'm still going to, like, be proud of it. The thing is just awesome. Mm. Lemon bourbon, number two. Or, I'm sorry, lemon meringue. Mm. Lemon bourbon would be number one. <laughs> um, but anyway, <laughs> the... Uh, uh, and then I'm just not a fan of the heat in the drink. That's the only thing. I think it's balanced. I think it's good. I think it goes away when it's time for it to go away mm. as far as heat. But if you put that flavor in my tacos, I'm in. My brisket, I'm in. My Any other thing I'm in. But as far as drinks, I'm going to kick that to the end because it's not what I want to drink. Fair enough. Right on. Makes sense. All right. Well, uh, just keep on going on, Dave, and let us know like where people can find Apis, like website, social media, where can people buy it online if they want it shipped. Sure. Just yeah. any of that. Um, so apisme.com, you can find everything we do. You can find the newest products coming out. Uh, you can order directly from there to your house, depending what state you're in. We ship to 41 states. Uh, you can do pickups here from there as well. Apisme.com. That's always the goal. Um, on Instagram at Apis Mead, on Twitter at Apis Mead, on Facebook, uh, Apis Mead and Winery, um, you know, everywhere. You could find us in about a hundred locations throughout the city. Almost any beer distributor that has like it's you know, decent amount of craft or somewhere in there. If they don't have it, ask for it. We will put it there. Um, apismead.com, man, hit that. We'll send it right to your door. Right on. Cool. And like you said, you have, you know, lemon bourbon coming out this weekend. If you're listening on a Friday, as you should, <laughs> and, <laughs> Yeah, a bunch of other things. Yeah, in the cooler, the cooler is full, and the taps are running. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of things going on. Put that on a T-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We usually try to keep like sixty some products in house, twenty five on draft or more. Axe throwing every other Thursday. We got food trucks every Friday and Saturday. Come out, check it out. If you can't have a good time, that's on you. Right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> all right. Well, if you want to find us on social media, all you have to do is search Hop Nation USA. They'll get you Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you want to listen to brand new episodes of the Hop Nation USA podcast every Friday, as you should, 
Then search Hop Nation USA, your favorite podcatcher, like Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, whatever. If it starts in pod or ends in cast, we're on that platform. And if it ends in .fm, we're on that platform too, because <laughs> they tried to in- invent internet radio once. <laughs> it was crazy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you're on any of those platforms, leave a five-star review because... We are a 6B Arthur show, but they only let us use five. And that's a bigger crime than the cowards I've noticed been leaving some one-star reviews on us without even t- saying why. That's bullshit. Because they would have to reveal their username and then mm-hmm. I could track them down and go to their house and give them noogies. Nope. <laughs> nope. Mm-mm. Well, okay, noogies. Fine. Yes, right no. Yes, yes, noogies Adam. is fine. <laughs> noogies yes, is fine. Adam, I can go to their house and bully the people who are trying to get one over on us. <laughs> 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 They're our enemies now. <laughs> oh. Some people just enemies. don't know how to use yeah. the star ratings. No. Nah. They're like, oh, yeah, one star. They're winners. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll be back next week. We've got something new. We're planned for something, and it'll be a good time. But thanks again to Dave for having us down. Thank at you guys so much. It's fantastic. Thanks for sharing time. your product. Thanks. It was a good time. And also, uh, go check out the old Christmas episode of Halloween is Forever, where Dave and Meg talk about horror movies. <laughs> <laughs> that was a pretty fun episode. Meg's yeah. awesome. It's just a good time to record with my friend. Yeah. <laughs> We'll we'll have you back sometime. Yeah, so. anytime, man. Just let me know. <laughs> but we could talk about horror movies then too. Sure, yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Cheers.